money, budget, work session. Ms. Mitchell, would you please call the roll? Council Member Baker? Here. Council Member Blanchard? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Dean? Here. Council Member Gavin? Here. Council Member Hennan? Here. Council Member Price? Here. Mayor Turbrack? Here. First order of business this evening is the approval of tonight's agenda. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Support. Support. Motion to approve by Council Member Blanchard with support from Council Member Hennan. Ms. Mitchell, would you please call the roll? Blanchard? Yes. Dean? Yes. Gavin? Yes. Gavin? Yes. Hennan? Price? Yes. Baker? Yes. Turbrack? Yes. Uh, next up is the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand for the pledge. The flag will be displayed on the screen. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have now reached the public comment portion of our agenda. If you would like to comment, uh, please call 1-312-626-7999. That's 1-312-626-6799. Uh, or if you are attending the meeting, uh, virtually, please raise your hand. You will be identified by either name and number. And when you speak, please state your name and city of residence. Mr. Mayor, we do not have anyone in the queue at this time. <clears throat> Give him another Another second to dial. If not, we will then move on. Still? Nope. Yep. yep. Okay. Then we will close public comments and we will move on to tonight's order of business. Ms. Mitchell, would you please read item number one? Budget work session, matter of a discussion of the proposed 2020-2021 City of Berkeley budget, A, City Clerk, B, Finance and Treasury, C, Community Development, D, Public Works, E, Parks and Recreation, F, Finance Debt Funds. All right, as we begin our dialogue this evening, um, taking on where we left off yesterday, again, um, in case folks are, are tuning in and weren't able to watch yesterday's yet, the budget this year is, is very different. We are focusing on needs, um, not wants, especially in this time of uncertainty. And I want to take time again to thank all of the directors, city staff, certainly the finance department for the incredible job that they have all done, adapting quickly to the changing circumstances since the budget season began to present us with what we are going to continue in our discussions this evening. Uh, with that being the case, uh, Ms. Mitchell, I wouldn't want you to get too comfortable, so we can uh, hop right into your department. Excellent. Thank you. Um, and thank you, Council, for this opportunity this evening to present my budget. I will echo um, the sentiments from my colleagues who presented yesterday. We'll be going page by page, so if anyone has any comments or questions, of course, jump in. Um, and the budget was developed pre-COVID-19. So if everyone would please turn to page 30. So items of note, um, I did want to point out um, under part, um, that is a new item that um, is an item until um, support staff during election time to the city clerk's office. 
and that would allow for 30 hours before the August election and 50 hours before the November election. Um, the next item on page 30 I'd like to draw attention to is postage that currently is in the budget for $1,200. Um, that amount is pre-COVID-19. I do anticipate that to um, end up more around near $3,500. That additional postage would be with a conservative <laughs> estimate of a 70% turnout and absentee voting and it also includes the cost of a postcard that we will be mailing to all of our registered voters who are not on our permanent absentee um, list so what that means this postcard will alert them to proposal 18.3 and that they do have the ability to vote absentee in the august and november election and it also um, provides them with a checkbox. They can check <clears throat> the box to be placed on the permanent list and send that right back um, to us in the clerk's department. And two questions on that. Um, one, should we just go ahead and set that at 3,500? This is a council question for council. You know, go ahead and increase that right now. I see no reason not to. Um, I, I fully expect that to happen. Um, I have no issue with that. Any of my colleagues disagree? Everybody seems to be okay. That was an easy one, Dennis. Okay, next right. one. And the other one, um, just for um, the public, how can we uh, go ahead and get on the permanent register vote? You know, maybe do it now ahead of time, save the city some postage. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Um, and people have been, we've been, getting, um, averaging about three to five requests a day already, which is great. Um, all you need to do is you can send a, an email to clerk at berkeleymich.net. You can give us a, a call, um, write us a letter, drop it in the drop box at City Hall. Um, we just need to know that you want to be on the list. Um, so any of those any of those means, you can also visit the Secretary of State website and um, elect there, and they'll notify us. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Your Honor. And Victoria, I know we've had this conversation, but I, I wanted just to clarify for everyone else too on the call, Not only the postcard not only uh, indicates an opportunity to get added to the permanent AV list, uh, but also an opportunity to just simply request an application for an absentee ballot. Yes, thank you. It is a two-step process in the state of Michigan. Um, so if you are on our permanent list, um, you don't automatically receive a ballot. Um, and thank you, Councilman, for pointing that out. What you do receive is an application, uh, which you fill out and return to the clerk's office. And then we mail you a ballot. And that is, um, we vet the application, we check the signatures. It's an added layer of security. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, I will move on if there's no further questions to page 31. Um, one item of note under program supplies, the rabies vaccination clinic. Um, of course, we were not able to hold that this year. I do hope that it's a service we could bring back to provide to the community, um, hopefully in our new normal next year. The next item is like to draw attention to is Muni code under consultant. Um, that item is $5,500. Our current estimate to codify our 2019 ordinances was $5,100. So this allows for an increase in cost, um, but there's also an additional $300 um, for an in initiative implement a user-friendly, time-relevant update of our online code of ordinances. This is something that um, I've been working on with Tori Mathis, and we've been getting good input from Aaron Schluto um, regarding having our residents able to access our Muni code via our website and have it timely. Um, right now, our code of ordinances are updated on an annual basis for residents 
um, accessing Muni Code through our website. And this um, additional program program would allow us to, we could either update monthly or quarterly. Um, and then the next item is contractual services. And I just wanted to point out that this election expense item is based on three elections. If the city did not have a special election in May, then that would be reduced. Does anyone have any questions on 31? No. Okay, I'll move along. Page 32. Um, items of note would be professional development. That is for Gina and myself. And I just wanted to point out, you know, of course, I would scrutinize every training opportunity available to see if it was necessary. Um, I would take a fiscally responsible re approach to that. Um, and also our professional development and training season generally is March to early summer. So unfortunately, um, the majority of our training has been canceled this year. So those would be costs, hopefully that we could roll forward and apply. Um, the other item is equipment. Um, I, we have to maintain the program that was initiated um, previously to replace 10 voting booths per year. And then we have the addition of purchasing a tabulator for our absentee counting board. This was something that I discussed with the city manager pr um, prior to COVID-19. Um, due to proposal 18.3, is necessary to provide our county board with the necessary tools to handle the volume due to absentee voting. And of course now, um, post COVID-19, that need is even greater. Um, if anyone has any questions on 32 or 33, if not, that would conclude my budget presentation. Any additional questions for clerk? No. Um, thank you, Victoria, um, for not only presenting, but for everything that you uh, are doing. And again, you know, your role, just like everybody else's, is, is changing with, with COVID and the impact of people being able to physically get out and vote. We don't know what that's going to look like, so we need to be prepared. and. Uh, the absentee tabulator is, is absolutely something that is going to be critical for us moving forward. So thank you. Thank you. Can I just note that you'll see when the um, uh, adapted budget comes out, so this category total uh, expenses for 2021 will increase about $6,000 for the postage. And there was a little bit of increase in uh, the payroll accounts. So just so you know, that's going to be more around 216000 don't want any surprises. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Appreciate that. Okay. Seeing no additional questions, um, we can move on to the second item um, today, which is finance and treasury. Mark, this is a wild guess, but are you going to be handling this? I will be handling this, yes. <laughs> uh, we will start on page 34. Um, just to kind of hit highlights, um, the we pay through for the border review through the finance budget. Um, expectation, uh, same number of meetings. Um, they usually meet in March, and then they have a, a July and December uh, meetings as well to correct errors, and mutual mistakes. In fact, um, I think they still get a number of of the. Um, uh, property transfer affidavits as well that they have to uh, run through and approve. So um, that's the board of review. The full-time employees are myself, Sue, and Lori. Um, we moved uh, last year, and, and council may remember or may not remember, we did move quite a bit of the, um, the benefit end of salaries and wages and fringe benefits to uh, 101952. 
uh, to move them out of the departments. Uh, it made more sense to me to track them in by fund in a separate 952. So a lot of those you see previous year postings and nothing in last year or the current year and then the two years to come. And that's the reason for that. Um, not a whole lot of large changes on the other line items. Um, a lot of them are self-explanatory. Audit services, uh, that's uh, Plant Moran. Uh, they do our annual audit that's broken out amongst uh, a couple of different funds. Um, a majority of the cost is here. A uh, consultant is generally Gabriel Roder Smith. Uh, when we have, uh, it's generally great GASB pronouncements, GASB changes, where we have to do annual reports uh, for GASB, and that ties into the audit. Uh, and then we do have uh, uh, a report coming up this year for our uh, uh, OPEB that we have to make sure we, we bring up to date. So I budgeted about 30,000 for that, a little bump from this year. Um, but you can see from past years on page 34, it, it runs, you know, it can run anywhere from, from around 25 at the low end to 53 uh, the year before I got there. And I think part of that was, is there was more work done by consultants uh, because you were in limbo for the finance director position. Uh, Oakland County Assessors, we expect, again, that fluctuates based on the number of parcels. Uh, I believe we're, we're uh, uh, we got a three-year um, contract agreement with the county for assessing services, so that 114 should cover us for the year. Uh, legal services are there, uh, again, kind of a just-in-case if we have any uh, legal services that don't tie into the regular legal account. Uh, we put money there just in case. Um, and then if we flip over to page 35, if there's no questions on 34, I'll move to 35. Again, not a whole lot of change from uh, previous years. Uh, and again, those line items are generally pretty self-explanatory. So if there's no questions there, we'll move to page 36. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, that's that's not even me. We already did that one. So that actually ends finance. Is there any questions from anyone on finance? If there are none, we can flip over to Treasury, which is page 37. And Treasury is uh, Brian Bemis, the Deputy Treasurer. Uh, Brian does a tremendous job. He's uh, He's been probably the most constant in the office uh, since COVID. Uh, he goes in, handles mail, uh, takes care of the Dropbox, um, and handles kind of the day-to-day -day transactions uh, and receiving it. He's been there, uh, I've talked with him a few times, and, and uh, he's said I'm perfectly fine in the office. <laughs> so, and I think he's actually been staying with his son, I found out today, um, over on the east side, because Brian lives in Saline. So uh, it was a pretty good commute for him. So he's a little bit closer and, and uh, um, seems to be none the worse for wear. He, he, uh, he likes to be busy. But again, there's nothing uh, changed all that much from his budget. If no one has any questions on either page 37 or 38, we can wrap up Treasury. Any questions um, for our director as it relates to finance or Treasury? They're relatively straightforward uh, this year. Okay, seeing no additional questions. Thank you, Mark. Uh, not only for the presentation, but for everything else that you've done and your staff has done, Lori, Sue, to get us into the position uh, that we are in able to, to have these conversations this evening. Thank you both. All right. Let me throw that in. It's We're still a well-oiled well machine, even working from home. So I got to throw that one in there. <laughs> much appreciated, uh, much more than, than most people probably know. Um, we now move into C, which is community development. Erin. Hi, thank you, everybody. It's wonderful to see you all again. Um, 
jump right in. If you want to turn to page 60, uh, we'll start with the building department. Um, we jump right down to materials and supplies. Uh, we'll look at program supplies. Um, this you'll notice in previous years uh, was reduced uh, quite significantly, um, but given the um, Given our need to be a little bit more up to date with our code enforcement and making sure that we follow up on, on these um, properties, um, inspections, inspection stickers, hang, hangers, forms and printing, those types of things are going to be included in this program supplies. Um, and we found that we were going through them at a much rapid rate than we uh, maybe previously had before. So we've increased um, the, the need for that in order to make sure that we uh, stay on top of um, communicating with our property owners. Um, jump down to uh, contractual services. That's the uh, engineering services that HRC provides for us. Um, given the type of uh, projects that we are working with in terms of uh, the Berkeley High School parking expansion project, the reconfiguration of the student drop off area off of Catalpa, um, they've assisted us in some uh, looking at some grading ordinance language just to make sure that they don't see any major red flags. And then the development of the Cummings property for uh, the new parking lot. We've, we've allocated um, some monies there to make sure that we are covered with uh, all of their wonderful services that they continue to provide for us. Okay, just moving right along. Okay. Um, so for uh, building inspections, um, you know, we do note that uh, we will continue to see a lot of development here in the community including the redevelopment of the Lost Let building, the development of kinder care, the redevelopment of kinder care and the um, aqua tots that's going to be going in and meeting former Farinas. Um, however, the home construction um, projects, the single family construction has dipped a little bit. So that, that accounts for that, uh, that little bit of lag that you see there from uh, the 2019 to 2020 budget year. Uh, so just wanted to draw your attention to that. As well as the uh, house inspections for the rentals. Um, we, we do have a lot of those, but we have noted that there are a number of rental properties over the last year that have since gone up for sale. Um, so those might have been instances where people have uh, rented them out in the, and then fixed them up and now they want to want to sell them. So we don't anticipate uh, there being an increase in those types of things, more, more of a decrease. Um, that follows the same thing with the contractual inspections. The nuisance cuts will, uh, are looking the same to be from last year to this year. We don't expect there to be anything different there. Business license inspections, uh, we did account for an increase in there uh, just because we, we have seen a lot of redevelopment, not only in the DDA district, but there has been a, a considerable changeover on the Woodward district as well. And we wanted to account for the marijuana businesses that are likely to be coming in here in the community. Um, vacant housing inspection, we've uh, recommended a budget increase in there just because we have, um, we are making sure that we are doing those inspections, whereas previously it might have been uh, overlooked from our department. So we wanted to make sure we encapsulate that. I, I would just add in, not from your department specifically, but maybe from predecessors. Department. Predecessors, yes. And then moving a little further down, uh, computer software, that's an update to the BSNA system um, for, um, for the building department. Uh, Kim and Dana are, just got to give a plug to them. Uh, they are fantastic. They have been doing a wonderful, wonderful job, not only bringing me up to speed in the middle of, of our changeover, but then dealing with everything in, with the coronavirus and working remotely and really have just been irreplaceable and have been fantastic to, to work with. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we are providing them um, with as much uh, resources as possible to do their job to the best of their ability. So this BSNA uh, update, uh, we work in that capacity. Any questions on the building side? Yes. Go okay, so um, Yasni. Yeah, sorry. Yes, okay. Thank you. Um, so speaking of Kim and Dana, I know I believe that each of us on council received an email um, complimenting them on their excellent serv customer service. And I just 
I can't imagine um, doing what they do every day. They truly are the front line of your department. And, you know, it's, it's customer service, customer relations. And I know that, I mean, when people email you and, and tell you someone's doing a good job, that really has an impact because we typically email when we're annoyed or, you know, irritated about something. So, um, but I know that to be true and it's great to hear that, you know, from the outside coming in. So uh, kudos to Kim and Dana. Also, um, I have a question. Yesterday, Dan mentioned um, best practices when he was talking about BSNA, D Dan Hill. And um, I'm just wondering how um, the BSNA training will affect your department uh, moving forward. Well, that's a way that we can keep updated on the best practices for how we can best utilize the system. You know, we, we all have Kim, Dana, and myself, we all have BSNA trainings um, from the number of other communities that we've worked in. I've worked in three other communities that have utilized BSNA, and we all do it a little differently. Mm -hmm. And this is a way if we get some training is to really be able to maximize that software and maximize um, what we can do with it so that we can use it to the best of our abilities. Because right now, I know how to do a lot of things, but we don't know how to do everything that it can do. And this would really sure. um, help us to better service our, our community and our residents. That's great. And I, I agree with you. I mean, that I, everyone know I am not the tech geek, but I do know that that software has a lot of capabilities and um, to be able to utilize it to its fullest is, you know, would be the best. And I, I like that that's your philosophy and to your point as well you know you might have used it in different places in different ways but if you can you know this is how how it can work for us here and so everybody's you know moving in unison with it and um hopefully being able to tighten things up with you know utility billing or permits or things like that so um i'm happy that you know that's the direction it's going and i thank you for your leadership thank you very much Sure. And thank you, Bridget, for when you said, Dan, you really Brady bunched it and pointed it down to the bottom of the screen. And so he must be below you on your screen. So he is, yes. Exactly where he is. Okay. Perfect. You're over here. <laughs> I'm over here. Dan, this Dan over here is me. I got it. <laughs> That's where he's on my screen, too. So That's okay. <laughs> thank you. Dan, I have a question. Sure. Go ahead, Jack. Uh, I noticed that you've got no memberships or no professional development in this department. Uh, is there a reason for that? Uh, the professional development will come in in the planning um, section that comes a little bit later. Okay, now cover all cover these people also. Yes. Thank you. Any other questions before we move on? Brandon? Yes, thank you. I'm sorry. Is there overtime uh, for Kim and Dana? Is there a provision for that that I didn't see? I'm sorry. We had discussed that um, during our, our budget meetings. And so um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that, that was that built into the full-time employee's salary market. Okay. Clerks. Uh, I don't know. Who knows that? I, I mean, there was no specific overtime to be put. Uh, was there anything in 371? I, I mean, I'm already to 801. I don't think that we had anything budgeted, but I know that the girls did get an increase. Okay. Uh, more than everyone else. Okay. Because, yeah, because uh, Aaron had asked for that. But I don't know that they work overtime. Do they, Aaron? They do, on occasion things, they do on occasion when things do get busy, yes. Okay. I mean, and I know a lot of times uh, we're comped, you know, we do comp time. So I don't know what your department specifically does. Okay. Thank you. There are no other questions. We can move right on to planning. Good planning. I, I'll just interject real quick, Aaron. I'm sorry. If we'll check into that, if they're not recording their overtime as comp time, then Matt and I can certainly talk about uh, adding an overtime line. I believe that's what they're doing now, but we want to make sure that they are compensated in some way for their overtime. So we'll we'll certainly make sure of that. Thank you, Mark. Okay. 
jumping down to um, page 82, the planning department. Um, so we'll jump to the books and periodicals. These, this is a, a newer item here um, that involves the planning and zoning news. This is a monthly periodical that is um, circulated from um, the MSU extension. It provides articles, uh, case, uh, local cases, updates, and things that are generally going on in Michigan that um, we might not hear about on the news, but certainly uh, worthy of, of review or discussion because it might be something that um, impacts us here in Berkeley. Um, so that is a, a monthly publication that I have budgeted for um, for the Planning Commission, ZBA, and City Council. Um, it's, it's a wonderful um, wonderful little magazine that, that provides a wealth of, of knowledge and information. Um, Working Generation, fifth edition, um, they've recently updated this, uh, came out in February. And this is a wonderful text for when we start making um, having discussions about our parking ordinance after the master plan is, is completed. Um, it, it helps us with how we want to, if, if we want to modify any of our parking requirements. Um, so it's generally a good, a good text to have. And it's one that is referenced uh, quite a bit in the, you know, when doing site plan reviews and such. Um, and then uh, I've allocated a little bit, a little bit for planning and zoning various texts. These are just really good to have for um, historical background, um, forward thinking um, ideas. Um, and it's something that can be uh, looked at, at at any given leisure by the planning commission, ZBA or, or city council, of course. Um, the planning consultant firm that I worked at previously had a very uh, robust uh, planning library. And I thought it was always a wonderful thing to have uh, around. So I've incorporate all of my text from grad school and, and things that I've accumulated here that I bring into the office just and they're good to, to reference if, uh, if people have questions. Uh, moving down to the program supplies. Uh, here we've included a line item for planning and uh, ZBA uh, supplies. Uh, that includes uh, placement nameplates. Uh, we do have a number of members that are, are up for the end of their term this year and next year. Um, so whether or not they decide to reapply and re-up that we, we, we don't know that for sure, but we wanted to include that to make sure that we have that money allocated in case there is a major turnover. We've also included a uh, line M for the public hearing sign incidental replacements. Uh, as you may recall, uh, we uh, city council passed an ordinance related to the public hearing temporary signs um, earlier this year. Um, and those are for projects such as uh, special land use, rezonings, um, variances, et cetera. And uh, the incidentals would include any kind of replacements or redesign that we want to do. Uh, finally, in this, uh, in this item is the business licensing material. Uh, we do have a uh, business license that is, has been designed by BSNA, but it's really uh, needs an update. And so what we want to do is uh, make sure we invest a little bit of money in, in, in those types of things that we provide to our community members, the new business owners, um, a special recognition of welcome to the city. Here's a, a very nice uh, business license that they can hang on their wall and feel proud of and not just something that looked like it was done on a Microsoft Word document. So we've allocated that money there just to, uh, to have a little bit of good, good positive feedback in return with the with community members. Uh, moving down to contractual services um, memberships, um, we've included line items for the MAP group membership, um, APA, AICP certification materials. That's something that uh, um, I'll be studying for and hopefully taking this year. Um, and just ways to keep keep updated on all the wonderful things that are going on in, in the planning world and making sure that I'm I'm up to date and I'm, I'm up on my game to, to better service the Berkeley residents. So, moving down a little bit further, we have the contractual services for Carla Wartman. Um, this is a carryover from, from last year um, for the master plan. So we wanted to make sure we continue to pay them. Um, We've also included line items for uh, a zoning ordinance tech review. Uh, typically, once a master plan is done, um, either the we can retain the same consulting firm or we can look uh, elsewhere um, through an RFP process. 
but uh, they'll do a technical review of what we've just adopted through the master plan and making sure that the zoning ordinance is um, doesn't have any holes and is reflective of the goals and objectives that were just uh, adopted in the master plan. So that's a really critical component uh, once the master plan is done. Um, and then after that technical review has been completed and we've identified what areas we need to uh, update or repeal, um, then we would start working on a complete and utter uh, zoning ordinance rewrite. Um, that can take place in multiple forms. Uh, the way we budgeted it for here, and granted this was pre-COVID, was that we would just throw away the old one and start anew instead of doing it uh, more in a piecemeal process. This can, it can take a lot more time to get it done, but that way it's done in one kind of fell swoop as opposed to looking at things um, piece by piece. Uh, question. Yes. The DDA also had a um, zoning, a similar line item for zoning ordinances or we your department and the DDA working together on this? Uh, yes, we would be, absolutely. Um, any ordinance amendments that we would, we would look to uh, move forward would absolutely be consulted with the departments or the uh, areas that would be affected by it. So uh, if we were to put forward anything that required uh, streetscaping or any kind of design in the DDA, I would absolutely consult with the DDA director. Anything that involved grading, I would absolutely discuss that with uh, with Derek and with HRC to make sure that there aren't any um, hiccups or red flags there. Okay, thank you. Question. I, I also noticed that and what it says is DDA zoning code rewrite. Uh, we have to make sure that that ties in with every, everything you're doing. They're, they're apparently going to rewrite some of our zoning. So we want to make sure that that's looked at with the technical review and everything else that's going on after our master plan is done. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, Jack, we would make sure that that happens consistent with one another so that uh, one can go in a different direction than the other organization. So um, that's part of the reason, again, uh, aligning the visions and the, the efforts of those two bodies is, is one of the reasons why we brought Jennifer on as a full-time employee now and put her into the city's organizational chart. Good. Doesn't look like there's anybody else right now, Aaron. So I think you can continue. Okay. Uh, moving down to the telephone, that's just my city issued cell phone. So um, people, public, uh, city council, planning commission can get in touch with me at any point. Um, Moving down to advertising, um, we've allocated uh, this uh, here because all the advertising is uh, mainly done as the public hearing notices. Um, so that should have always been in the, the planning uh, budget. Um, there is an increase in this because we are doing a lot more public hearing notices in terms of the master plan, um, any uh, zoning ordinance amendments that we are doing um, and uh, we will be doing a lot more noticing related to the marijuana businesses that will be going into the community. Granted, there are only three, but they all, each one requires uh, multiple public hearing notices. So those will all be going out to the newspapers and we wanna make sure that we have um, budgeted for that appropriately. Uh, moving down is to the professional development. Um, this is for the AICP certification uh, that I mentioned earlier. Uh, Plan to Zen subscription. This is an online uh, website and it's similar in structure, I guess, to the um, planning and zoning news, but this is an online forum and they have a lot of articles. They have a lot of um, cases. This is more of a national thing and not uh, based in Michigan, but they also have courses and webinars. And these are things that could be used uh, not only by planning commission, ZBA, city council, um, just to, so we can all stay up to date um, on the latest and greatest that's going on in the world of planning. Uh, we have budgeted um, funds for uh, Planning Commission ZBA training, uh, the MSU Citizen Planner course. Um, this has received uh, great, uh, great and positive feedback from the number of people I know who have taken it um, as a way to keep up to date on what's going on and what's expected of them as the, the bodies that review these, these plans and the uh, variance applications. Um, the National Planning Conference, um, this 
uh, these funds were budgeted again pre pre COVID, but uh, we looked at the um, the the planning uh, conferences that are available, and this one is taking place in Boston next year, May first through the fourth. Uh, and it, these, these conferences are really just a wonderful opportunity to get a chance to see what's going on in other communities. The, the map one is, is filled with wonderful knowledge of things that are going on here in the community, but uh, it's also good to get an idea of what's going on nationally to see what uh, might be coming down the pipeline in the future. And then again, uh, general planning and zoning workshops. Um, those are good for the ones that are a little bit more localized, the daily seminar, day seminars or workshops that are a little bit more localized in Southeast Michigan. And that concludes the planning budget. Any questions for our community development director? Councilmember Hennon? Yeah, I just wanted to comment. I'm very impressed with the direction you're taking the department and, and I really like all the emphasis on the education and training materials. Just keep up the good work. Any uh, other comments? Again, I'd like to echo those sentiments of Council Member Hennon. It, it certainly, there, there was um, some times of transition uh, before, and, and I believe that we are past those now, and you have certainly uh, taken the leadership role and taking us, taking us in a direction that we're all very excited about um, from an overall, just, just the way that you look at things, um, your creativity, and your commitment to continuing education and always trying to improve not only yourself but also uh, everybody that's involved in the community development department so thank you uh for everything that you're doing thank you very much okay well seeing no further comments we have uh already come to the main event here even though it's not the final i mean I almost feel like Derek and Sean, we should take like a 10 minute break before we get into this, but I think we're ready to roll. Uh, I see Sean is here. Derek, you're ready. Um, I'll let you, uh, let you gentlemen take it away. Okay, thank you very much. And thank you, Sean, for joining us. Um, first and foremost, I, I wanna thank DPW staff, Janice, Diane, Sean, uh, the entire field crew for all their efforts during uh, this unique period of time. Uh, I know Janice and Diane, the, the phone volume has been uh, quite high the last couple months and uh, everybody has gone um, above and beyond the call of duty. So um, I wanna thank all the DPW staff. Uh, this is a reflection of them in many different ways. So uh, I thank each and every one of them. So I also wanna note that finance, um, is a huge part of this budget. Um, from a labor perspective, there may be some questions coming up that, that, that they can answer, Mark and Lori. Um, so certainly chime in if you, if you have any input on that as far as the labor side. And uh, I'll do my best to answer some of the other questions. So uh, let's get started. Um, looks like I'm on page 62 for everybody. Um, any questions on page 62? Nope, I don't see any. Okay, let's move on. Uh, hold on, hold on, one, one second. Oops. Uh, just so for, for everybody, as we're going through these, you know, obviously it's a pretty extensive budget. And as Derek and Sean move page by page, if you have something you wanna chime in, I, I may not be, looking up so feel free you don't have to raise your hand just unmute yourself and say hey Derek Sean got a quick question for you and, and we can handle it that way so that I don't have to continue as well trying to, to stop Derek every time and look up everybody good fair okay sorry Derek go ahead sir thank you Mary and, and and Sean I know there are a couple things you want to chime in on Sean so feel free when those become appropriate um, page 63 I'm looking down here to see uh, anything on 63, uh, questions or comments? As we move to 64, um, you'll see relative to um, contractual services, uh, a DT forestry grant 
that we'll be looking for in the years ahead as well. So I wanted to kind of point that out. I'm, I'm looking for some changes between the fiscal years. Any questions on 63 or 64? Derek, I just have a, a quick, very general question. Was all of your budget completed pre-COVID or have there been changes made uh, since the state of the world has changed? Um, the answer to that is yes and yes. So um, the majority of it was completed prior to COVID. Uh, there have been some um, adjustments throughout though since COVID. Um, very few, but there have been a few adjustments since COVID. Okay, if you notice one, if you, um, just point it out, that would be helpful too. No problem. Thank you. Yep. Any questions on 63 or 64? Get into some of the utilities. Just so everybody knows, I, I track our utilities. It's a three year running average. Um, moving on to 65. Building maintenance. Uh, professional development, you will see in professional development, APWA, the Rhodes Scholar Program. So that's a new program we're looking to kickstart. Um, two staff, $1,200. Um, again, something that we're hoping to uh, start up and I think that will be, uh, that, that will be a three-year commitment. As many of you know, Sean completed MPSI, which is a great training program. It's a three-year commitment recently, and uh, we're looking to continue that with a, the APWA Rhodes Scholar Program. Any questions on 65? Just congrats to Sean. Amen to that. Good job, Sean. You're part of uh, illustrious alumni now. 66. Um, any questions on 66? You see some minor building improvement uh, repairs there, at least for 2021. Um, equipment wise, got an enclosed storage container. Any questions on 65 or 66? Derek, I think this is one of them where we moved stuff for COVID, didn't we, on vehicles? So yes, um, and thank you, Sean. We did, in the internal discussions, we did move, uh, we did push both of these items to the following year, the Toolcat tractor, as well as the dump truck. So the dump truck is hook truck number four for those keeping track. So this is our last hook truck that we're planning to purchase in the course of our uh, budget discussions. Uh, we decided to push those into the following fiscal year. So I wanted to uh, bring that to council's attention if Matt has not already done so. I'll note just to uh, jumping back just a little bit, uh, the capital outlay building improvements space is another area that we had to defer some projects as well. Um, Jared was, was kind enough to um, kind of take a look at what could realistically uh, wait a year and several of the items that you see there ended up uh, being moved back to the 21-22 budget because of that conversation. So uh, again, uh, yet another director who is sharing in the sacrifice and all um, as we look at diminishing revenues. How much longer can that salt dome be pushed out before it falls down? And we've been pushing that thing out for a number of years now. We have and um... And Jack, I don't have the, the long-term plan in front of me, but um, I think we're gonna have to definitely address that in 21-22 for sure. Uh, we did make some, some minor shingle, shingle improvements in past years, as well as plywood on the, on the roof, but uh, we have to address the, the salt dome soon. I would agree with you, Jack, we, Jack's right. I mean, we've been talking about this, it seems like every year, and, and I am a little bit concerned that pushing everything into 21-22 is going to be awfully DPW capital intensive and at the salt dome replacement at five grand. I just want council to, as we move towards the, the end of tonight, 
Um, if council does decide that look, that five grand may be better spent to, to move up into this year to get that thing taken care of, um, I, I want us to give sitter, serious consideration to that. I, I appreciate you, Derek and Sean, you know, trying to move that out, but with, with that expense and the fact that it's something that we do speak about every single year, I'm very concerned that it's not going to last much longer. Well, Salt Dome's 150,000, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the numbers have flipped. Yeah. The Salt Dome is 150. Yeah. And exactly. So the Salt Dome is the 150, and we've got hook truck, you know, the tool cat, uh, and, the, and the hook truck next year. I really think we want to consider moving that up into this line item um, this year. I'm not saying we need to necessarily do it right now, uh, see how the rest of the budget goes, but I do think it's something that we need to consider. And I will say from a practical standpoint, with the items that have been moved into the, the next fiscal year, um, we're not gonna be able to, uh, there's a lot of items in, in 21, 22, and, and even if we all agree that they belong there, it's gonna be a, a real challenge to bid them out and, and successfully uh, complete that work uh, with everything packed into that one year. So I think it's gonna take a little bit of work to, to look into that and sort of redistribute things a little bit, uh, even it out a little bit um, moving forward, so. And my concern is the salt dome just gets moved back again because we have some other things that, that take that space. Agreed. So are you suggesting we move it? I'm suggesting that council discuss it and, and think about it as we're moving through the rest of, of the, the public works and parts and rec budget. And, and depending on how the rest of things go, I think it's something we may want to put back into this year's budget, even at 150, um, to get that taken care of and move it away from next year as well. I have a related question about that salt dome uh, replacement. I it being a construction project, would uh, the current state of things make it more cost effective to be doing construction now as opposed to maybe when this was estimated last year or the year before? Like, is this still a fair estimate? Or if we were to do it this year with the state of things, might we get a reduced rate because other people are putting off so many construction projects? And I want to make it clear to, to council as well that, that I'm, I'm looking back into my budget, um, you know, what I had proposed. The, the salt dome was a 21-22 project per my budget. So I want to be clear on that. I, I don't want anybody to think that, that we have or that this department has pushed that. So we were planning on 21-22 for the salt dome knowing we've made those minor repairs and knowing that we're going to be talking about other things uh, ahead of us here uh, that we think are maybe a higher priority. So I, I want to make that perfectly clear. I, we certainly want to do the salt dome, but um, we had we had targeted that for 21-22. So. Thank you for clarifying that. Also, Council Member Price, um, to your point about um, perhaps getting better pricing, being in the midst of my kitchen still being repaired. <laughs> Everyone, now that it's um, the governor has opened up construction, people are clamoring, clamoring. I mean, like I, I didn't lose my place in line before the shutdown, and I'm grateful for that because now they're all of a sudden things are percolating up. They're, the trades are very busy right now. So, but I think it's still, it would certainly bear, you know, looking into to, to see if there's any price difference. So, you know, it could, it could just be situationally dependent as well. I don't know how many salt domes um, are going up right now. So. Well, and, and just before as we leave this and, and move on, I certainly don't have an off -line time with the salt dome, but again, it is something that's come up numerous times and we've seen things that have been planned um, out in, in the, the budget for a few years out that haven't made it. And just the fact that I know you guys have been able to make some minor repairs, but it's something that we seem to speak about every year. Um, and, and some things I would rather have safely taken care of as opposed to having to make amendments to the budget when they go. Understood. Okay, continue. All right. 
Any further questions on 65 or 66? Let's move to 67. 67 starts the public works garage. And this is where our uh, mechanic and, and those related fees are covered. So uh, questions on 67 or 68. Um, I may chime in to finance here. Um, public works wise, I was looking to uh, potentially add two new employees in the next fiscal year, uh, one of which was a mechanic and one of which was uh, a middle management type position in the office. So um, Mark or Lori, I don't know the, the mechanic position, did that make it in? I don't think so, Mark. I no, because we've just got the one full time employee at fifty five. So I'm saying no, that's one person. <laughs> and I don't know what happened with that. I know that Mark and uh, Matt discussed that. Matt, Mark. Uh, unless it's located in one of the non-general funds, I, I thought we were a go on the second mechanic position. Okay, I, I kind of, I thought I was told that we weren't adding those, and that's when we moved. Um, remember, Mark, we moved the two out okay. into the, yes, yeah, so we, we took were going two. to, we were going to add two positions, right, and we, then, but we didn't. We took two from 441 yes. laborers and put them into major and local streets. Correct. So but we shifted. We didn't add any position. No. Right. Yeah, I, I, I that, that was that under was the impression that, that yeah, the, the mechanic position was going to move forward, but the um, the middle management person was, was not going to happen this year. Okay. I recall being told no new positions and move the two from 441 into major and local streets. So we can fix this if that's what we need to do. And obviously these discussions, these discussions on these employees were, were pre-COVID. I want to make that perfectly clear. Um, we have uh, been told about, you know, a potential uh retirement on the horizon relative to our mechanic so i would certainly view the mechanic position as is a priority over and above you know anything else that we look into that because we we don't want to be to the position where we don't have a mechanic period so uh, that would certainly be the priority and and i know these were discussions were made pre-covid so uh, that's something we can talk about i guess in the future Derek, does your mechanic um, service vehicles from other departments as well? Yes, he does. So he, he is the mechanic for, for the entire city as it relates to fleet. And but his salary is, is uh, we would see that through your budget? Okay. That's correct. Yes. Uh, public safety, I think, has um, a line item for uh, vehicle repairs as well so i want to be clear on that but yes uh primarily it's through the public works garage which is this account how much if we did provide that mechanic on um, this upcoming budget year how much would that be um salary and benefits wise wage and benefits Because with the with the constraints you mentioned, I'm inclined to suggest we add it. We have an item in tools for tools for a second mechanic. So whether the guy is at it or not, we got five thousand in there for tools for him. There you go. So I'm not totally losing it. It was at least at somewhat. Um, yes. Councilman, I think we were looking at you know, a, a similar wage rate to an operator one. I don't have that in front of me, uh, what that wage rate would be, but it would be an entry level mechanic position. 
uh, that would work with our current mechanic. And at such time as our current mechanic retired, that, that they would be at least in line to, you know, assume that role or at least be in the running for the role for the lead mechanic. So having some sort of transitional process, I think would make a lot of sense uh, given what we know right now. Right, so you'd have to figure even if they he, they hired him and paid him, I don't know, 35 or whatever. I'm not sure what a operator won, but then you've got to add benefits. You're talking, you know, depending what you start them at, upwards of close to $65,000, $70,000, right? Yep. And benefits yeah, yeah. are a lot. <laughs> yeah, you'd need between the retirement and the health care. 60, 60 and 70 would be my guess. Yeah. Well, I think at this point, um, we need to, to see those numbers um, so that we can make a, <clears throat> an accurate decision regarding this because it, it may potentially be something that we do, as, as Councilmember Hennon mentioned, want to move forward with. I'd rather have another mechanic than a salt shed. Well, I was going to say, has it come down to a salt dome or mechanic? And if that's the case, then that's that, that's what we have to do. I mean, that's that's what a budget is. It's it's a list of priorities, which is why I wanted to hold off on saying, yeah, let's move forward. And we've already found somewhere where we I think those resources can probably be better allocated right now um, to have an extra body in there than than, than the salt dome. Yeah, yeah, I um I agree. I think having um and I um the. Uh, message that Derek communicated about the, the transition, the knowledge transfer, the overlap, I think is crucial, um, especially, you know, I know we've been doing a great job with our um, capital improvements and replacements and things, but we still do have some um, some aged and dated equipment that there's a little kink here and a little twist there and then, you know, that special touch um, that I think that transition would really be helpful with. So I'm inclined to, 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 um, to support this should the numbers work out um, for sure imparting some additional institutional wisdom. Indeed. Unless Sean wants to go back to be a mechanic. I don't know. I mean, you know, it, <laughs> there's no phone to answer. I mean, my own world is kind yeah. of nice. There are some advantages there. Yeah, there are. <laughs> Lori right. and, and I work with Derek and Sean to come up with estimates for council um, before you approve the budget next week. Thank you. All right. Yeah, Derek, if you could just let me know, send me an email for, you know, a starting salary, and then we could come up with an overall expense. No problem. All right. Any other questions on 67 or 68? Actually, on the vehicle maintenance on the 442939, we've got 18,000 budgeted. Um, if we're going to be holding on some, to some of this equipment longer, I think that number needs to go up quite a bit. We've got some vehicles that need some repair. We've kind of been holding off on thinking they are leaving if they're going to stay. You know, probably have to double that number would be the would my guess. Okay, so I'll hopefully they last two more years. Yeah. So, so double it. So Sean's point is, I think, you know, given the uh, pushing off, and I think the, the hook truck is probably the biggest one. Um, if we're going to keep that dump a while longer, if you guys remember the, the order time on the hook truck is well over a year now. Um, so allocating a, a, a few more dollars in vehicle maintenance probably makes a lot of sense. So is, is doubling it an accurate number, Sean? I would, I would think so. I, I can think of 15,000 or so in repairs between the, the two trucks that this one's going to replace um, on top of what our normal outside repairs would be. Um, okay. Does the council have any issues with that? No. Okay. Can we make that update, Lori? Thank you. Yep. Got it. All right. Any other questions before we move to uh, street lighting? All right, let's move to 69. Street lighting, um, 
I don't think there were too many changes uh, here relative to street lighting. You can see my notes um, that Lori did a wonderful job copying over. Um, any questions on street lighting? All right, hearing none, I think we're gonna jump to major roads, am I right? All right, according to my binder, we're on page 94. If everybody could go to page 94. So this is the revenue side. Obviously, all of us have questions and concerns about where we're gonna be relative to revenues and gas tax. Um, I wish I had all the answers here. I certainly do not. Um, this is an area that we put together prior to COVID. So um, I made my best estimates relative to the revenue side of, of major and local roads uh, based on the spreadsheets that are made available on the uh, state of Michigan website, MTF Fund Act 51, uh, to produce these numbers. So, um, and Derek, we did mention yesterday to council that we're, we did adjust the updated revenues because of the gas tax uh, lack of sales. So we amended the Act 51 revenue in major streets. Um, a million and 42, Lori, is that right? From the 1197? Uh, yeah. And then we also adjusted the local street revenue. We did reflect that in, uh, in the updated paperwork that Lori sent to council yesterday. So we have accounted for those uh, in the uh, summary budgets. Right, so it's a, it's a million 87 all total for the federal and state money instead of the 1242, Derek. Okay, thank you. And the same thing, it's lowered in local streets too, we'll give you the new amount. Okay, thank you. Any questions on on page 94 or 95. All right, let's move to 96. Street maintenance operations for major streets. Um, this is the big account under 202. Um, any questions here? And this is where I know see labor laborers jumped up because we put one more laborer in there we increased that oh thank you Lori. yes that's right i know uh i know sean had an interest relative to the uniform account in making some uh some changes to the uniform account um that didn't get reflected here, but it, it's something that that we're looking to do in the future. Um, council and others that and then Sean, maybe you can just hit on that real quick relative to a broad based uniform. Yeah, what we have now, they get an allowance, they go down and they they can basically pick their style of uniform, their winter jackets, that kind of thing. Um, and the whole total number with boots and uniforms together is 550. What I'm looking at is leave that alone. They can still pick out whatever winter jackets they want, the boots, but purchase a set of uniforms that is the same across the board. So everybody looks the same, just a more tidy uniform look, um, which would effectively pretty much double that number to what's currently there. Um, I'm sensing a theme every time Sean speaks, it's the double the number. Double, we double, can... double, 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 double. <laughs> Following the Catholic school model, everybody look at wearing the same uniform. <laughs> so certainly, this is something. And Sean had mentioned this this to me, and and frankly, I it was on me to to get it into the budget, and and I did not. It, it slipped my mind, and then COVID hit, and and obviously things have changed. But um, this is something that that 
Sean is passionate about and I, I fully support that in the years ahead, hopefully we can make some changes to the uniform accounts that I think will uh, better serve all of us as well as the residents and sort of kicking that up a little bit. Look a little more professional. All right, um, any questions on 96, moving to 97, contractual services, engineering? Um, I don't see any big changes here as compared to previous fiscal years. Um, a lot of our usual exercises. Any questions, 96, 97, 98? All right, moving to 99, street sweeping. Um, again, we've got that contingency item of hauling and disposal of street sweepings. Um, Sean, correct me if I'm wrong, but we've been, uh, SACRA has been uh, taking those and, and we haven't had many charges of late. Um, we certainly hope that continues, but we've been keeping a contingency item here just in case we have any charges related to those. Yeah, we, we've been trying to direct haul it right to Sacra, dump it in our yard and then we haul it out. It, uh, especially springtime, it, it starts smelling and the neighbors can smell it and it's just not good to have it sitting in our yard. So as long as we yep. keep it hauled out on our own, we won't need this line item, but um, it's good to have it there in case something happens and we don't have time or the ability to haul it. So we don't need to double it. Okay. Like no it. double. Okay. All right, moving on. Um, page 100, uh, street trees. We do have, I think uh, council's aware, but we are proposing to um, cover the full costs of, of new right-of-way trees. Uh, starting next fiscal year. Um, I did note that it, it does appear to me that this, that the notes under program supplies 468758 um, may not be accurate. Um, and so Lori and Mark, maybe we can double check that. But I, I think that uh, the numbers, at least in my bander, need to be updated a little bit. Um, as far as the, the amount of trees and the cost of the trees, but we are planning to cover those costs. And the 13,000 number is a good number, so I wanted to point that out as well. Yeah, your detail totals out at 10.8, so the detail is a little light. Correct, so we, we may have just an intermingling there of last year's notes with this year's notes or something. Uh, but we'll double check those to make sure that they're correct. But the 13,000 um, is a good number as far as the total costs. And again, we are planning to cover those full costs. Moving down just for council, um, you can see the contractual services and, and my detail there. I've been tracking since Hart has come aboard the hours trimming, removal, logging, stumping, the whole nine yards. And I've shown those there and you can see uh, the total costs there. And, and so forestry is in the order of $300,000 per year uh, for that work. Um, and those are split between major and local roads. I have a question about that, um, Derek, please. Um, sure. How long is the contract that we have with her right now? Do you know? Bridget, I think uh, my memory is that, that a year or so ago, we did extend um, the, heart, the heart bid. So um, I, think, I think that bid has been extended and we're with heart now for you know a few more years. I don't know if it's two, three or four, but. Okay. Um, I just was saying, wanting to get a sense of that and like where we, but I do, I do recall that. Yes. Yes. Their original uh, term after coming in after Wanzi did expire. Um, so there was another bidding process and uh, they were the low bid after we rebid it again. So uh, okay. they are still with us. Thank you. Yep. Any questions on trees, major streets? All right, the next account, page 102, 
is catch basins. Um, not much to report here. Uh, very similar numbers to previous years. Uh, materials, removal of catch basin debris. debris. Uh, any questions there? All right, let's move to 103, 104. Grass and weeds. Uh, this is our uh, maintaining uh, boulevards, those sort of things, and as well as seed and mulch. We do pay uh, Royal Oak as well as MDOT uh, for some medium maintenance on Woodward. And we've got some fertilization in here for Coolidge. So um, 103, 104, grass and weeds. Any questions? Derek, just the same one that comes up every year. You've got weed control in there. And I know people are going to ask us about it. We're just using spot control on weeds. We're not generally spraying the whole boulevard on Coolidge. Is that correct? We, uh, Jack, we do spray the whole boulevard, but there's no pesticides. It's all weed control. The, we fertilize all of it, but we don't, the spot treats for weeds. Um, okay. Thank you, Sean. He treats areas with weeds that have weeds. He doesn't just blanket the whole, the whole area. Um, it's much more cost effective as well, just a spot tree versus blanket tree. Right. That's what I've been telling the people that are contacting me about too much weed control. So, okay. So I'll make sure we do the same thing. And no pesticides. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. No pesticides is an important thing to, to make sure. And thank you for bringing that, uh, making that clear, Derek. All right. Let's move to street signs 105. Major streets. Street. Here we've got our uh, our usual items for uh, sign replacements, uh, stop sign, post reflectors, and painting. Uh, we've got some memberships in here as well as contractual services uh, for uh, long line replacement. You will see a jump under contractual services. Uh, Public safety's request for sign replacements is a big part of that. Uh, we've also got an increase there due to Coolidge and the, uh, the layout change there as well. Obviously, it's going to be more costly to uh, repaint Coolidge between 11 and 12 mile, given the uh, increase in markings on, uh, on Coolidge. Uh, no big changes to traffic signals. Again, we pay, just so everybody knows, we pay RCOC for traffic signal maintenance uh, for those signals on our streets. Questions on 105 and 106? All right, moving on. 107, winter maintenance. It'll be here before you know it. Salting. Um, all that fun stuff. Program supplies, you can see uh, no big changes in our uh, salt quantities, our brine quantities. Um, I made a uh, approximation here on the rock salt at $60 a ton. Um, I think it actually is around $58 a ton, so that's a little bit conservative, just so everybody is aware of that. Um, but it's in the ballpark and it is a conservative number. Um, I wanted to point out as well, um, the following year will certainly be a big year as it relates to salt. So then um, this is an extension year, even though it says it's a bid year. Mitten actually worked out a deal to extend the contract, but next year we will be going out to bid again for salt. So it will introduce a little bit of more unknowns as far as the salt price. Any qu questions on 107, winter maintenance? All right, moving on. Local streets, if everybody could jump to 114. Again, uh, Mark alluded to the fact that I think he made some adjustments here in uh, Act 51 uh, revenue. And just for my curiosity, Mark uh, and Lori, what, what did that number arrive at? I 
believe it was 390,500 was the new estimate. Thank you. So 114, um, any questions on 114 or 115, which is the revenue side of local streets? All right, let's move to 117, local street, street maintenance operations. Any questions or concerns here? I don't think we had any big labor changes here, did we, Mark? We just added same, same as uh, major. Major. We added we added a employee, which again I think that's where the confusion uh, happened. Is we originally we were adding the mechanic, I believe, and then what we ended up doing when we saw the the big deficit and with COVID is we shifted uh, two laborers in the DPW to major local street, which we had added. So we just left them in there and pulled them out of the general fund. So it helped the general fund bottom line uh, and left this kind of where we were, which was to add the two, uh, the individual employees. We were undercharging, so to speak, in major local streets uh, based on what we could do. Um, and I did, I think I mentioned yesterday as well that, that we could also look at additional transfer from major street to local street to offset some of that local street deficit. But yeah, we did add the employee here. Is that the reason that your overtime jumped so much? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, and I think, uh, and we didn't mention it earlier, that in the notes it showed 30, I think uh, Dennis pointed that out in, in one of his questions that it shows 37,000 and it's actually was shifted to 15. And I think that was in the general fund. We just needed to correct the note. Uh, I have a note here to let you know that, Lori, because I, I don't think I told you about that. Yes, I already fixed it. Okay. All right, any uh, questions on 117 or 118? All right, let's go to 119, street sweeping, local streets. Again, we've got that contingency for hauling and disposal of street sweeping. Uh, the number is bigger than, than major streets because we have more lane mileage in local. Uh, again, it's a contingency item there. 120 is uh, street trees. And again, looking under program supplies, um, I think we'll revise the, the note under there to get that correct. The amount is correct, 27,625 is the right number, but we'll get the right numbers in for the notes on that. And then you can see the, uh, again, the contractual services for, for forestry work are divided there and then we split those between local and major streets. Derek, is your note wrong there? It says split between major and local 70 30, 70 major, 30 local. That's backwards. So they, yes, Jack, that that we have more local streets than major, so that is correct. You are correct on that split. Okay. Just just a note is wrong, yeah. What, it, where, what, where is that? The first line of contractual services says split between major and local 70 30. It should either major and local uh, 30 70. Yeah, it should have said yes. Yeah, okay. just a typo. All right, let's move to uh, page 122 catch basins for local. Any questions here? One twenty three grass and weeds. Again, lower amounts here given local streets. One twenty four street signs, program supplies, you'll see. Again, sign replacements. Uh, we don't have, you know, coolage in here um, for that work, so that's taken out. Um, given it's a major street, we've got our TA membership, and then we also have the other piece of that 
public safety request for sign replacements, the bulk of the of the work is here. That's seventy percent, fifty six thousand. Eric, how, how close are we to being completed with our all of our street signs with the new the new ones that meet the requirements? Yeah, street name signs, which have been uh, accelerated here the last uh, couple of months. Um, and Sean, I don't know if you have a percentage on this. I certainly don't, Jack, but I I, I feel like we've got to be approaching, you know, 50% are done or at least getting closer to that number. Sean, do you have an opinion on that? Yeah, we're around a little over 50% uh, with the new street name signs. We've pushed a little harder on them with COVID because that's something a guy can do by himself. So I can send out a couple crews doing signs and uh, they're kind of isolated. So it's, it's, we've been focusing more on signs lately. So it's, they're, lo they're looking good. They're doing a good job with them. We've also been adding them to the uh, GIS map. So we'll have a, a map with a picture and this is the sign. This is when it was installed. Mm -hmm. This is what it looks like. And, um, uh, be able to track it. Excellent. Okay, can I ask a question? Since you brought up GIS, um, I know that it was we got it with the SAW grant, and um, I know HRC uses it. But you just mentioned now with the signs, um, could you talk more about how broadly it's used in your department? Um, you know, like out in the field, the practical application of it, I guess. Well, it's we've got all our hydrants are located and we have GIS when's the last time we've operated the hydrant when's is it winterized is it in use is it out of use um, street signs our water gates and valves or sewers so when we're doing utility locating for contractors that want to do work um, you've got an iPad and it's got all our lines on it so you look down at the iPad and okay there's a sewer line here there's a water line here here's the size here's the depth um, made things much easier. We're starting to see the benefits of all the hard work yeah. put in. Yeah. To add on to that, the tree board, the tree inventory project got deferred, of course, but um, you know, we were hoping that the trees that we inventory could also be put on a GIS layer um, and so that we could monitor them over time and and also know, you know before they go out, oh, there's a tree here kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> right. Thank you. I just, I really like hearing about all the ways that those applications are being used. And um, even though I'm, I'm not very techy myself, I love a good uh, use of technology. So thank you. No problem. It's nice. I can do it right here from the phone. Oh, right. excellent. Oh, right there. That's great. I'll blame that on Stan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just stay on a question of clarification on these public safety signs. These are um, public safety is planning on doing a in citywide inventory of our other signs like no parking and, and so forth. And then this would be analyzing if what we have makes sense where we need changes. And this line item is the replacement, you know, purchasing or moving or replacing those signs, correct? It is correct. And, and what we what we assumed here uh, at a very planning level is that this would be an outside uh, cost to do that work. Um, obviously the potential exists that the DPW could be involved in this, but uh, in many cases we don't wanna do that because we've got a, you know, our own responsibilities and this is obviously not a small task. So, um, I think the plan was is to set this money aside and, and take a conservative approach to doing the work. And hopefully we all come in uh, lower than this estimate, whether we do it or not. Thank you. All right. Any other questions on street signs 124, 125? Let's move to 126, winter maintenance. Um, I don't think there's anything too new to report here. Obviously I talked about the, the price per ton. We're gonna actually come in a little bit lower than what I had reported here when I first did the budget. Uh, so these numbers should be uh, you know, conservative if we have a quote unquote average year. Any questions on 126?
All right. We're 25% of the way done. Oh, let's see here. Lori, I saw you roll your eyes. Um, <laughs> oh my God, I'm so Solid waste. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're on 132 according to my, my binder. Solid waste, revenues. Um, any questions here on, on solid waste? Again, I in my notes, I passed along the increases that we're planning to see from SACRA, uh, which vary from three to three and a half percent. Any questions on 132? The only question I have is on the uh, on your special trash, your notes again don't match up with, with the uh, price that you got because uh, I come up with 3,900, you've got 4,500. Well, no, it's not a big deal. Let me check here. All right, Jack, we'll, we'll double check those and see. Yeah. Might just be a typo in the notes. All right, moving on, 134, we get in appropriations for solid waste. We've got the overtime for fall leaf collection, which can obviously vary depending on weather conditions. There's times when, when we get slammed, there's times where we can tackle it during normal working hours. So that one can vary quite a bit. Moving to 135. This is the core of the, the rubbish and, and trash payments made to SACRA. Uh, you can see my notes, again, showing those increases as well as uh, city stops listed there. You will note um, brush disposal. We have we have gone down quite a bit relative to that, and again, that's just reflective of what we're paying the contractor. I want to be clear on that. So uh, this is amounts that we would pay directly to Hart. So that has come down quite a bit. But obviously, our staff is involved in this on a monthly basis. Eric, have you gotten um, any feedback from residents on Tringali? recently I have not what is there anything no I was just curious I mean from from time to time I've heard some things but but overall pretty positive I mean I know it's something you and I have spoken about in the past I just didn't know if yeah you know, or if residents have reached out to you yeah nothing of late um you know we do deal with issues from time to time you know whether it's trash cans you know down a couple a couple houses down or whatever it may be, you know, wind can play a factor in that. Um, so, you know, I will say that all in all, it's been good. I think it's important for council to note that there were other haulers that are involved in SACRA that weren't able to pick up yard waste at all this year uh, to start the year. Uh, I'm grateful that Tringali was not one of those haulers, but um, you know, there are other communities adjacent to us. Uh, yard waste was not being picked up at all. Uh, we had a little period there where the guys, where Tringali was a day late or so. Uh, but I can tell you there were other communities within Sakura uh, that, that had to have other contractors come in to pick up yard waste. So I'm grateful for that. So I think all in all, we've been satisfied with their performance. Okay, thank you. Moving on to 136, uh, you'll see some equipment items here, and we've got um, 100,000 in for a rear load garbage body. So real quick, let me just describe that. This is a body that would fit on one of our hook trucks. Um, again, we're trying to 
make our vehicles as flexible as possible. And with our new hook trucks, uh, again, we've got, we've ordered three, we're in possession of two. Um, we'll be able to actually get a body that will fit on one of those hook trucks so that we can obviously use that truck more than just in the winter season. So we've got a hundred thousand uh, budgeted for that rear load garbage body um, in the budget. And then you'll see the following year, we've got another used rear load garbage truck um, in there as well. And uh, Sean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think our intent was to, to play it safe and show that used unit in there. But if we're happy with the, the rear load body, we may be able to just buy another rear load body and potentially save $100,000. Am I uh, remembering that correctly? You're, you're exactly right. If, if the first one works out and everything's perfect and we love it, um, instead of buying a whole other truck, we just buy a body for one of our existing trucks and, and take that extra chassis out of the mix, save the cost and purchase and the cost and maintenance. Any questions on equipment? All right, I think that includes uh, solid waste. So now we move to 592. Anybody got a page number? Two twenty-four. Thank you, Lori. Yep. Two twenty-four revenues. So I do want to um, share with everyone, as I was informed today, um, water uh, use from the Sakwa side uh, for the month of April in Berkeley was down approximately 20% year over year. Um, so I think that's a good number for all of us to be aware of. Um, that certainly surprised me. Um, I had thought, given that we're, in my mind, a bedroom community, I, I didn't realize maybe how much the commercial side matters as it relates to water use. Um, but right. clearly, it's been a big change uh, with the onset of COVID uh, on the commercial side. So again, year over year, April water use is down 20%. And that's not unique uh, for SACWA communities. There are communities uh, in our area that are down 30%. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're kind of right in the middle on that, but I, I wanted to point that out, uh, at least for the month of April um, regarding water use. So again, this budget was prepared pre-COVID um, and you can see some of our projections here as it relates to revenues. Um, Again, we, it's not to say we're gonna be down 20% for every month, but this is something that we're gonna to continue to monitor. But um, any questions on, on revenues, page 224? All right, 225 continues with revenues. I think I have anything uh, start on 225. I think we can move to 226 appropriations. Mark or Lori, did we have any any changes on the labor end relative to 592 here? No, we did not. Doesn't look like it. Okay. Um, I did want to point out to council, 
We do have a water license stipend for union employees. Um, those employees that hold a water license through the state of Michigan, which requires testing, uh, do, re do receive a yearly stipend. Um, we're trying to encourage that more and more for our union staff to obtain those licenses through the state of Michigan. And we've received quite a bit of interest and it's not an easy test. And uh, we're gonna keep pushing our guys to continue to take that test, uh, even if they might not be successful the first time. Any questions on 226? All right, moving on to 227. see any big changes on 227 228 again you see I break down uh, fuel I run three-year averages for both unleaded and diesel and those numbers are reflected here we also have the West Nile briquettes that we have uh, recently purchased and obtained and will be going in catch basins very soon on 228. Hey Derek, do, you, do we get reimbursed any of that from Oakland County? We do, we do. It's not the full amount, Ross, but we do get reimbursed a portion of that uh, amount that we pay. And I think we, we're spending around $4,500 a year and I feel like the reimbursement is in the range of 2000, just to kind of put that in perspective. Okay, gotcha, thank you. Yep. 228, contractual services. Um, you'll see the items that we have listed there, including uh, some contingency items, some annual fees that we pay. Uh, we will be renting uh, an additional vector next fiscal year to clean catch basins. That's a two year cycle, cleaning the catch basins. And we rent a vector unit for that short period of time so that we can keep our vector that we own um, out on the sewer main line. So we've been doing that now for, for a few years. We've also got grease control listed there. We've got an area downtown that we, uh, we utilize the, these little microbial pucks that break down the grease uh, and help us out cleaning the lines, basically. It, it just keeps things moving uh, to avoid having a blockage in those lines. <clears throat> We've also got the Eagle required lead line replacements. So starting in calendar 21, Eagle is gonna require uh, the 5% of your lead service lines be replaced. So we've got that very general calculation uh, noted there uh, for lead line replacements. I'm actually hoping that, that we can actually start lead line replacements before the end of this calendar year uh, to some degree. So I'm hoping to get a head start on that even before 2021. Uh, just so council's aware, SACWA put out a bid for this work for all of the SACWA communities. Um, the economies of scale to try to get the best pricing. Uh, those results were shared with us this morning and, and I'm happy to report uh, some very competitive pricing and um, it looks like we'll be using the SACWA bid uh, moving forward uh, for lead line replacements. So uh, more to come on that. We've talked about doing a portal for residents to report back to us. Uh, we're gonna have much more to report on this in the months ahead. Derek, quest, quick question. Sure. Uh, in your note, are you saying that we've got 20% of our lines are lead lines? That's correct. And, and again, that's, uh, that's an estimate. Um, for instance, the Harvard reconstruction that we did a couple of years ago, we impacted 100 homes, and I believe 19 homes had lead service lines. Um, in talking with our staff, the results of the Harvard project, you know, we're, we're making an assumption that we've got about 20% lead in the ground. 
certainly that could be different based on exposing these lines, but um, you know, we're not gonna go out and, and dig up every service line either. So we've talked about doing this portal that would allow residents to look in the basement, take some pictures and report back to us via the website and, and using that is sort of the baseline for replacing lead lines um, because we've got old service cards, we've got other information, but the fact is it's not information that, that any of us can certainly count on and I'd much rather see it firsthand and, and react. Okay, thank you. And uh, this item is essentially a huge unfunded mandate from the state that we're gonna be paying over the next 20 years that's really going to dip into our um, balance in this fund. Yes. That is correct, Dennis. Um, I will say this, um, you know, we don't have a uh, water main project going this year per se. So um, I think that's going to help us out a little bit. And I would, I would like to be pretty aggressive with lead line replacements in the years ahead. Uh, that's my personal opinion on it. Um, I'd really like to try to get these out of the ground as soon as possible, recognizing we still need to replace, you know, public mains um, as it was intended. But uh, this lead service line issue is not going to go away. And um, I think we just need to be proactive and, and start replacing them. And I'm, I'm grateful that SACRA took the initiative uh, for all of us communities to put out a bid and get those economies of scale going. Um, I'm sure there'll be some bumps, but now we have a contract uh, that we'll be able to utilize with very competitive pricing. Okay, thank you. All right, moving to 229. Um, again, you'll see here we've got um, engineering uh, cost here. Um, we've got that line item for a water main replacement project, which again, I think I think the lead service line is going to probably take some priority here in the short term, but we very well could have a, a, a quote unquote smaller water main project uh, similar to the Coolidge water main extension north of 12 mile in our future. Um, we've also got some other um, costs here for asset management plan work, uh, ArcGIS, um, miscellaneous items that, that we're gonna be working on uh, in the year ahead as well. Cross connections, uh, that work continues. Um, we've got um, a third party involved helping us with those cross connections. Huge strides have been made. We're working with the residential customers as well in cross connections. Uh, MDQ has been pushing that. Although now uh, with lead and copper, it's taken a little bit more of a back seat, but that's still a priority for us. And then you see contractual hauling and disposal of some of our uh, spoils as well as bringing in uh, sand and gravel. Hey Derek, yep. you, uh, you, you got increased residents of cross connections. I thought our goal was to eliminate cross connections. <laughs> We're increasing residential cross connections oh and yeah, we i don't see want, a little we don't want any cross connections we, we don't want any and i do see a little a, a little typo in there don't i um a floating t in there but um yeah mdq has been pushing for the residential side which we've already started that so i'm i'm feeling good about that any, and we'll continue to work the residential what's the percentage we've done on residential so far any idea I don't have a percentage, Jack. Um, you know, there's been uh, three or four, three or four streets uh, covered in the city of Berkeley, but um, I don't have a, I don't have a percentage per se. Thank you. Yep. All right, moving to two thirty, and you can see my calculations on what we expect to purchase relative to bulk water as well as what we're going to pay on the sewage side. Again, that's sanitary. Um, 
Sanitary is based off of the bulk water. They take the readings off the master meters. So those two are one and the same. So if we're using less water, um, we're gonna be using less sewage, at least on the sanitary side. We've got the non-residential surcharge, which is that Gliwa pass through. And then I've got some of the utilities. There's a sister account in 101, it goes with that. Any questions on 230? All right, let's move to 231. Trying to see what do we got here? We've got, um, again, I, I show a water main project, no road work you can see under construction. Again, that would have to be a smaller project, um, but we have that ability to do that. The other side of it is if we decide to do more lead service line replacements, then that would obviously eat away at this amount, but we do have that shown as a line item. And then we have the building improvements, which is, includes a big one, the office relocation and res renovations at 400,000, as well as some other items there. Um, like the salt dome, we've talked about our office for many years, and uh, we have met with folks that are a little more up to speed on the on the building side of things, and and they have pointed us to using um, our garage area, ex especially that that frontage along Bacon, where our lunchroom is. That that really is the the best alternative to creating new office space. So. We've obtained a preliminary estimate, very preliminary, um, and that 400,000 sort of fits within that uh, to basically convert that area that we have over there to office space and move into that area. Obviously, it's uh, it's a bigger expense, but by the same token, I, this is, I'm sure Sean would agree that We'd rather have a new office before the new salt dome, although they're pretty close. Yeah. But, uh, this, this is office, locker rooms, lunchroom, a uh, little conference area. It's kind of taken care of a lot of spaces in one. Um, you know, we're, we're losing our original lunchroom, but it's incorporating a new lunchroom in there, a new locker room for the guys, and then offices for office staff. If anything, the, our current office configuration with COVID it's shown us just how vulnerable it is. You've got people on top of one another and it's just not a good fit. Questions, concerns? Uh, not a question, just a comment. As we've seen a, a few times, there are a number of items in this budget so far that we've gone through that have been discussed for, for a number of years. We've talked about the Dillon, we've talked about a few other things. I um, mean, we've talked about the, the building and it is certainly significant, but anyone that's been through that building is aware that there are significant limitations and um, practical difficulties with the, the office space. And this is not just to create a, a new office for Eric and Sean. This is, this is something that is practical for use, for efficiency. And to make sure that we have actually a, a decent space for our uh, DPW department. Additional comments on that before we um, we move on? It is a large line item, so I want to make sure we, we take some time if there are additional questions. Okay. okay. All right, moving on. Um, down to equipment. You can see the uh, items that we've listed out as it relates to water equipment. Um, I do wanna point out to council and all that we are uh, looking at and trialing a different water meter manufacturer um, that has pretty attractive pricing, that has pretty attractive uh, history as it relates to quality um, so we're going to be reviewing that. COVID uh, 
uh, sort of halted that a little bit. Obviously, we're not in people's homes now and not replacing meters and, and won't be for a little while yet, but um, we are looking at other meter, meter manufacturer um, potential and uh, we will continue to report back to, to you on that as far as what we see. Um, but it's something that we've talked about for a little while and, and, and with Sean's help, we have taken that initial step and we're looking forward to uh, trialing those out and seeing how they perform in the field. Will there be any challenges with um, two different systems or does the actual meter reading part, is that the same? and it's just the actual meter that you're talking about. Sean, do you want to take that one? Yeah, the, the meter reading, um, as far as BSNA is concerned, it doesn't care, but our new meters will have to be on a separate route because the, the two different companies, the, the reads, they just don't communicate um, one company to another. So they'll be on a separate route, but it's it'll be a totally radio read route. So it's not, you won't have to go house to house. Um, and we would have the ability to change our older meters over to be read with a new system. But if we're gonna do that, we might as well just change the meter. The new meters is a one all self-contained, nothing goes on the outside of the house, there's no running wires. Um, a lot of times people have finished basements and they just don't like you messing with them. I don't wanna look at the wire. It cuts meter appointment time in half. You put the meter in and you're done. Uh, there's no running wires, there's no messing with things. Um, so we're looking forward to trying it. Yeah, Sean is, is hit on the probably the biggest advantage is this lack of having that outside piece, that that wire through the wall. Um, that's going to be huge, not only for our installations, but for the rest, for the residents not having to have that. So uh, we're really looking forward to trying these out and seeing how they perform. We've received... Uh, We've called references and we've received very high compliments from some of our neighboring communities. So we'll see how they perform in the field and report back. To that, uh, to that point, uh, Sean, if they were to, uh, and Derek, if they were to not work or not meet our expectations or um, uh, bring about some uncertainty that we're not aware of today or that others haven't experienced, would we leave those in place and maintain those two systems going forward or would we retrofit back you know, new versions of the old meters, if that makes sense, um, and undo it? Just curious on the contingency approach, uh, just in case. Any um, any thoughts or plans on that? Yeah, we started pretty small. Our initial order is 50 meters. <laughs> start there and, and put them in and see how they do. Um, but it's a very large, reputable company and, and our neighbors have had no problems at all with them. So I'm um, pretty hopeful that everything's going to go okay. And I would see us, if this did fail, you know, we would we would put back, you know, the other meter in those whatever 50 yeah. some locations so that we didn't have this repetitive action as it relates to reading meters, Councilman. Excellent. Thank you. That sounds like a thoughtful approach. And again, given the the reputation and experience from our neighbors on this. I certainly don't anticipate any issues and I'm, I'm glad to hear that it's been thought through just in case uh, you know, something were to arise that was unforeseen. Just a quick question on the meters to Derek or Sean. Um, I, Derek, I know we've had this conversation in the past before, but um, the capacity for some of these new meters, uh, does it lend itself to be able to do sort of a um, a rapid read to be able to let someone know if they might have a leaky toilet, a, a you know, a burst pipe or something like that, where we can let people know that maybe they have some sort of issue before, you know, a, a huge water bill ends up on the a delinquent tax bill or something like that. Sure, um, they do, and 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 that applies to both the current meters that we have as well as this new meter we're trying out. The kicker is you've got to have the the, the backbone of the system to be able to pull that data in um, and, and be reading it to be able to tell someone that they've got that issue, you know, a true uh, remoting reading system, which, which, you know, we're still a few years away from, that's our end game in this. You know, we would love to be able to push a button and feed all those meter readings in. We'd have uh, much more dependable water loss data We'd be able to notify residents uh, ahead of time. So there's lots of advantage of that 
the disadvantage is there's a initial capital cost with towers and things that's pretty expensive. Um, so, you know, we haven't sort of pulled the trigger on that as of yet, but ultimately that's where we're going, Councilman, is, is to that uh, automated meter reading system. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm glad to hear that that's down the road. That sounds like, the, you know, despite the, the upfront capital costs, it certainly have a lot of advantages uh, once we get there in the future. Yep. All right, uh, 232. You'll see we've got some, some vehicles noted in 232 on page 232. Um, a meter van replacement, um, a smaller hook truck, as well as a replacement for one of our two uh, rubber tire backhoes um, that are in the budget. Any questions on, on any of the vehicles or, or any of the other equipment noted here? Computer software, um, Stan has assisted us with this line item and um, we've got several items listed here, um, some of which Stan has taken on, some of which remain in our budget. Um, annual fees, those sort of things. Any questions on, on 232 or 233? The uh, ESMA online. All right, let's move to Storm. Oh. Yes, it is. And, uh, is that and it is, it is new. And, and Stan, if you're with us, you might be able to chime in on this. But essentially, what we're looking for is to have uh, residents be able to pull up their water information online. Um, it certainly appears most, if not all, of our neighboring communities have this ability, um, uh, which would be nice to be able to have outsiders be able to to pull up that information via BSNA. It's a it's an, it's something that they offer, and um, we've been supporting this for a couple of years now. So, um, Stan, I don't know if you're with us. If you want to expand on that, sure. Um... Currently, we are doing some internal testing with that only because we've changed credit card processing. We're not going to be using official payments anymore. We're going to um, point and pay. So with assistance uh, from Mark and Brian and Treasury, we are um, testing it. It's been turned on probably last week, I think, Mark, if you can correct me on that. So we're going to see how it works with um, with payments and all that kind of stuff before we roll it out. Um, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of questions with the residents and things like that. So we wanna make sure internally we're comfortable with everything before we get crushed with questions and, and comments and things like that, so. Yeah, but it, it is it coming. Will be, it will be available for water bills as well as tax bills. Uh, I just chimed in with the county today about the database uh, people will be able to look up their own taxes as well and pay them online. Um, it will eliminate a lot of the phone calls that Janice and Brian and emails, because we've been inundated, obviously, being closed with emails, people asking questions about taxes and water bills. Uh, it will allow them the opportunity to look those up on their own. As a resident, it's free of charge. Uh, but to a title company or somebody looking for information, they'll still have a fee uh, to to access the information. And that should be rolling out uh, pretty quickly. So unlike Stan said, we're testing it right now. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, long-term eventually we'd like to, um, as an option to email water bills out, that'll save on postage and the costly mailing machine that we're paying as far as rental fee too. So uh, we are looking at uh, at that option also. All right, uh, 234 storm sewer. Um, so we've got the separate storm line item here. We've got the uh, overtime account for uh, clearing 
catch basins. Uh, you've seen we've had some increases there over the years. Again, we've we've added additional restricted catch basin covers. So that shouldn't come as too big of a surprise that, that we have more of those calls. Um, and then we've got the storm flow, which is the, the monthly bill that we get from WRC uh, for our storm flow. We've got the combined system. So all of that flow ends up at the county and they've got two different rates set aside for both sanitary and storm flow and they're projecting uh, about a 2.1% increase on, on those charges. Any questions on 234? You know, moving to 235, um, our annual sewer lining program. Um, this is the program that's been in place now for 20, 25 years. Uh, Berkeley was one of the first. We've got over 30% of our public system structurally lined, which is a major accomplishment uh, from a structural integrity uh, perspective and something we should all be proud of. And uh, we look to continue moving forward with uh, that lining work. You may recall, we've recently uh, went out to bid relative to this again, and we've got a multi-year contract now with Granite uh, for lining and we're actually finishing up lining uh, for this fiscal year as we speak. So um, another mile of sewer has been lined in the city of Berkeley. Any questions on uh, 234 or 235? All right, that might be it for me. Any general questions? General questions for Derek or Sean. Uh, keep in mind the, the two changes that we made, one in the staffing side and two on the maintenance side. Uh, I'm hearing a significant echo from myself. Is anybody else getting that echo? A little bit, uh, uh, okay. Mr. Mayor, but um, I had more of a general comment than a, than a question. Just wanting to um, uh, to thank the team, to thank uh, Derek and Sean and all those folks for uh, for such a thorough and, and um, well thought out um, approach to keeping an eye on all of these important infrastructure assets that uh, that we all depend upon. Uh, it's uh, it's um, tremendous work, and and this was very well done, and you're thoughtful narrative through this budget review process has been highly appreciated. So, so thank you guys for, for some great stuff. Thank you. Additional comments? I'd just like to say, echo those thoughts. We have an excellent DPW department and we should all be proud of them. They do a great job both in planning and in execution of their projects. So thank you for what you do. Certainly, uh, thank you guys. Thank all of you. Uh, as council members have mentioned, you guys do a tremendous job, and a lot of what you do often goes unseen and, and unnoticed. And we certainly appreciate it, um, and we thank you and, and for your foresight and being able to adapt to the COVID circumstances that we're currently dealing with in the budget. Okay, seeing nobody else. We are going to take a brief five minute break and I'm going to figure out what's wrong with my internet and we will resume at 8.15 and finish up.
And as soon as uh, everybody is back on, Teresa, you'll be ready to roll. All right, everybody back. I'm trying to count. It looks like I've got everybody here. All right, and if you are not speaking, um, if you could mute your microphone just because there was a feedback and we think that's what was causing it. All right, we are up to Parks and Recreation. Teresa, you're up. Hi, good evening, everybody. Derek, that was fast this year. It's early. Um, seriously, thanks. Um, all right, so we're gonna start on page 148. We're going to start with account 614. Give me a shout if you want me to slow down. Uh, 614, 148 starts with revenues uh, and immediately. So some of our budget is post-COVID. There have been updates, uh, not everything, obviously. Um, Lori's done a great job of updating a lot of it. Um, the state revenue uh, grants uh, will need to be adjusted to 180. Uh, there was additional money. We were applying for a community foundation grant uh, for the pocket parks. Pocket parks are no longer in our expense because we will not be doing that this year. So that will need to be adjusted to the 180, which is already an earned state. Uh, the state grant that we received is actually a federal grant, the Land and Water Conservation Fund grant. I know you all received um, the press release that Tori put out and the email from the city manager about that project and we can talk a little bit about that more in depth as we go along uh so that's so that revenue stays the same the number of our revenues we did decrease um due to covid um we had some conversations obviously surrounding summer camp and our other camp uh and programs however some of them will still have to be adjusted and updated uh, because they were those decisions and those numbers were put in before we knew that all of that was going to be canceled. So the way that our summer camp works is obviously it's broken into two calendar years, one fiscal year. So some of it you'll see those amounts, what's there right now, the 170 in revenue is actually a pretty good amount because a lot of that won't be gained obviously in July and August of 2020. But we will see that in assuming that summer camp opens in 2021, we'll see revenue in March, April, May, and June. And actually, typically, April and May are our two heaviest months. So you obviously see a huge drop in that, but from the effects of this year, that's assuming that it runs in 2021. We'll continue to monitor whether or not that's gonna happen. As far as the other uh, programs as you go down, um, keep in mind that when we go through the expenses, the expenses will show eventually that those camps aren't running as well. Um, the revenues in those camps always uh, exceed those expenses, uh, but these revenues in terms of girls basketball camp, girls volleyball camp, boys basketball, all of these, women's softball, uh, tennis contract, all of those will actually be zero in this year because they won't be running as everyone is aware of. Um, so those adjustments will be made. Same thing with the expenses. Uh, stop me if you have any questions, but that's how camps will work. Some of the programs are a little different. Uh, same thing with the community center use, that number, that 23,000 you see will most likely be adjusted. Obviously, we're not running out the community center for the next several months. After Labor Day still remains to be determined. And even if people are coming back into the community center after Labor Day, there's a really good chance that they're in much smaller numbers and we're not running it out in the same way that we are now for these large parties or oftentimes, you know, an event like a dog show or a convention because there still may be restrictions on how many people can be in the building. So that 23,000, I, I think, will be a, a lot lower. Uh, little, little tough to, to determine. I, I think we'll probably make those adjustments a little later into the fiscal year when we have more of an idea of what's opening and what's not and when. Um, same thing with Dream Cruise. Uh, obviously, um, the decision to say Dream Cruise 2020 is canceled has not been made by the board yet. However, the city has made the decision to not run any of our in-person events or take on those costs of, you know, whether it's signs or porta potties, um, permitting, um, and, and all of that. So, from our standpoint, we've made that decision. Um, so those costs will not be exactly zero because some of those costs you'll see in the next fiscal year they'll be close to close to zero. 
Uh, same thing with the expense uh, for 2020. Um, summer fest, winter fest, uh, those numbers will be lower. Again, they will hit partially in June of next year, but um, that 6,500 most likely will be something close to 1,500 or 2,000. And then you'll see much lower expenses for this year as well. Again, we're not running any summer fest events in 2020. There's a possibility of running them in 2021. Miscellaneous programs. Uh, right now, I think that 85,000 is a good number, um, just because we assume that some of them will be running, but I have a feeling that that also you will see a dip. Uh, two reasons. One, again, we don't know when we'll be running. We don't typically run a lot of those programs in June, July, August anyway, so that doesn't affect that as much. They're through the school year, so September through uh, May, really. Um, but I have a feeling even if we start running them, you're going to see a drop in numbers of people who want to take classes in general. So we'll just um, kind of adjust that as we go. But that's all of our, you know, whether it's karate or, you know, PIO or yoga, those are those um, revenues that you see in that. Those expenses will all, those expenses will go down. Again, those programs in itself cover each other. It's a 70-30 split. We're not, we're not, we don't have actual staff. We're paying the instructors and the costs that the classes are, we keep them as low as possible, but they, the actual programs pay for themselves. So if the revenues are going down, the expenses are going down as well. Um, and again, we'll make those adjustments as, as we, as we go. Any questions on page 148? Okay. Um, 149, so this is park rentals. Um, this is the pavilion at JC, that, that, that's, that's all that that is. Um, typically, uh, I, on a given weekend, June, July, and August, it, almost every weekend, it's rented. Um, obviously, we are not allowing anyone to rent the pavilion uh, at all this summer. That was a decision that we made in with the idea of, you know, trying to not allow people to congregate and also our park equipment is still closed. So our pavilion, uh, anything that we have rented, we refunded those fees. So that 3,500 um, is probably gonna be, uh, you know, just a couple hundred possibly from next June because we're not having any rentals um, this year. Um, corporate donations, um, that is based off of what we hope we may get. Um, we were told that this year DT would not be a sponsor for the Cruise Fest. Obviously, that's not even happening. So that number will be zero um, for the corporate donations in terms of the revenue. Transfers in from the general fund next year, um, and this is something that obviously finance works on, um, but we're seeing a much lower transfer in. Uh, the main reason behind this being that um, a number of our capital items will not be happening this year. Um, obviously, you can look at what our capital plan was last year, um, what we had projected we were going to spend and what we're spending now. So the projection for the transfer in was much higher um, and um, it's decreased quite a bit um, due to uh, canceling out or pushing back a lot of those capital items. Any questions from page 149? Just uh, just a note that, that that's adjusted specific to this year, and we would we we will, we will see that transfer return to its normal form in, in years previous. No questions. Yeah. Okay. So are we adjusting these revenues for 2021 that you talked about, or are we leaving it as is for now? Um, I, I think there's some, Lori, that we can definitely adjust, um, and I can, I mean, we can, we can do that, you know, like the, like the 10,000, we know for sure that's not happening because that event is not happening. Some of the programs and things like that, uh, I, I think it's probably better to do, I mean, and, and I'll, I'll ask Mark and Matt what they want to do, but I think an amendment is probably better just because there's a lot of unknowns, um, and I'd rather... Kind of see where we are in three to four months and what's happening with the building in september and october before wildly changing it now if that that, that would be my thought that i mean so, for it's worth, just, that's my preference as well right but with the donations do you want me to change that number that ten thousand or do you since we know that's not happening i, I think so 
I think so. <clears throat> Matt? I mean, if that was specifically for uh, our dream cruise, which we're that, not getting, if that one's a lock, yeah, it, it, if that one's a lock, then uh, we can go ahead and change that one, though. But the rest of this, I'd rather see a first quarter budget amendment uh, more align them to reality than. Yeah, and, and I think I just want to. Total loss. Yes. That? Yes. Take it off. Got it. Any other okay. questions? Yep. Any other questions? One forty nine. Okay. Um, One fifty. Uh, uh, right. Uh, so, full time employees. Obviously, there's five in our department. Uh, there's myself. There's our program manager, Scott Jennix. There's our senior and event manager, Dan McMinn. There's our office administrator, Manus Lusowski, and there is our maintenance, uh, Joe Nazioni. Um, I, I, I've sung their praises for years. I continue to. And um, those are those make up the full-time employees that you see off the top. Um, Part-time employees, uh, these numbers as well will be adjusted. One of the things that we have not done and I do not foresee um, us doing is bringing back our seasonal maintenance um, to work outdoors. Uh, we know that there will not be baseball seasons for our youth on our fields as a decision by the, the, the city um, to not allow that. Um, therefore, setting up baseball fields and, and all of that will still be cutting to make sure that they don't go to pot. We have beautiful fields and we want to make sure that that's the case. Um, but we're, we're just not going to have the volume of work that we typically do. Um, I'm also exploring the possibility of using um, with their full consent and allowance um, at least one of our other full time staff possibly through the summer doing some of that work. Um, you know, given the constraints that we're working in with right now in terms of our building and our, our programming. Um, so with, with that, I, I think that it makes sense to, to not bring back seasonal. Um, we also really want to maintain still um, not people working too closely together. And, and I think that that's um, the right way to go. Any questions on that? Reese, I got a question on uh, 707. You got two lines in there, 600 hours in there twice so it looks like they're duplicates it's, can one of those be removed it's not actually that that's the way i don't i don't that that's the way i know for years that it's been it's individual people so we okay. we've always had two guys seasonally that work 600 hours one we have that we added in i think it was two years ago jack that does the 300 over 15 so they come in a little bit later so it's just to signify um different people okay thank you very much but again we don't plan on um yeah doing that this year, but yeah, it's just to signify the other people. And then the other is office staff. Um, and that's typically our person in addition to Connie, as you all know, who works our evening, she's in a different line item that you'll see a little bit later, but when she can't be there, we have another office staff um, person that fills in. Um, I just clarify when you're talking about cutting seasonal staff and how that will affect this budget, if this budget is kind of half Yes, in this It'll summer and half in next summer, so it would pretty much cut that just in in half. Assuming we're going back to a new normal next summer. Correct. Okay. Yes, because they typically start end of March, early April, so it'll be April, May, and June next year. So yes. So am I uh, reducing all of these part time, or is this something we're going to leave again and adjust as we go? Again, I yeah, would leave it us, uh, just. Yeah. Yeah. First quarter. Just because I want to make sure that we can get through the summer not doing that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. So overtime uh, in our department, our our, our staff works a, a whole lot of hours outside of the normal eight when we have events. We've always used a, a comp situation when when they're working those over eight hours. Um. Everyone ex obviously except for myself. Uh. However. Years ago, we did have an overtime budget, small, but it, it allowed for at the times that our maintenance is sometimes working over um, to, to sometimes get those overtime hours instead of always doing comp. Um, sometimes the hours can be significant and, and, and it will just, the, the hours of comp will add up. So again, you see it, it's a small number, it's a, it's a thousand um, 
dollars uh, for that, but I wanted to point that out because that's different than in, in years past. Um, the next few line items I'm going to kind of go pretty quickly down because um, they, they've pretty much remained the same uh, and, I, and I don't foresee too many of them changing from office supplies, uniforms, playground athletic. Um, that's page 150. I'm going to keep going unless you all have questions. Um, same thing with 151, fuel and oil. Obviously, uh, for our department, we have a number of vehicles uh, that our maintenance staff uses. We also, you'll see in 615, uh, maintenance and supplies for our smart vehicles. So what you see here in 614 um, is our fleet for our maintenance. And then uh, 615, you'll see our uh, senior transportation costs. Um, maintenance supplies, equipment supplies, again, um, no big changes in any of these accounts. Um, same thing with C tools, memberships and dues. Um, don't ask me to read off all of those acronyms. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I could, uh, but I'll keep it brief. Custodial services, we did add, um, given that the city was out to bid and um, knowing the size and scope of our building, um, we wanted to make sure that if those costs went up, we obviously could, could get through um, those costs and have the, the funds to do that. That may go down depending on what service we go with. Um, contractual services, there's a couple things I want to note here. Um, the first few lines in our notes are the same. There are two items in here um, that I have budgeted pretty conservatively, meaning that I think will probably um, come in much lower on both line items, but I wanted to be sure. Um, they're both safety items. So the first one is um, having a certified playground inspector review all of our equipment and um, really give us a check of where we're at. Um, this is a really good thing and I think a necessary thing. Sometimes it can lead to um, items that you find that, you know, you sort of get a rating, you know, need to be replaced immediately need to replace it this time or you know doing fine that sort of thing but it's, it's a necessary thing and it's a it's a safety thing and um, given that we do have some play equipment that is in great shape but certainly not new it's something that I wanted to see happen um, the second one is checking all of our light poles so all of our poles that are in our fields that are at our parks um, super important thing to do um, we do it every four to five years um, and I and I think this is a probably a good time to plug that uh, poles are not a fun item. Um, they, they, uh, they're necessary and they're expensive to replace, but we're close to there. We're getting really close guys. Um, we, the last time we had the poles checked, we were told, you know, probably the, the nearest one, I can't exactly give you the years, but they can, um, sort of tell you. And it was 10 years and that was about five years ago. Um, so we really have to start planning um, and thinking about replacing a lot of these um, and the best way to do that. I certainly don't think it's the way that we've done it in the past, which is wood. Um, and so that will be something that coming up, um, you know, the city manager and I have talked about and, and seen a way to, to fund that. It's, it's going to be costly, but it's necessary to make sure that they're safe and secure. Any questions on that? Um, telephone, uh, advertising, um, this is basically for any time that we want to do a little more advertising. A lot of times we'll do different, uh, parent magazines that are out there in Oakland County, whether it's Oakland County Moms or Metro Parents, um, where we're trying to promote something, just something extra that we do. So you'll see that in advertising, um, utilities, building maintenance, equipment maintenance, all of that, um, remains pretty much unchanged. Um, some years are good years with our building and some years are not. This year has definitely been better than other years. Vehicle maintenance, again, that's with our fleet. Professional development, these are for our local and county and state organizations. Um, between myself and Scott and Dan, we really kind of split up. Dan goes to a lot of the senior stuff. I do a lot of the director stuff and Scott goes a lot of, to a lot of the program manager type stuff. So, um, and then we all um, typically go to the, the state conference. This year, uh, the state conference was close by, so those costs were a lot lower because um, obviously there wasn't a fee to, to travel and stay somewhere. 
Land improvements, there's two land improvement items. That's an old budget thing. So this one's zero, you'll see land improvements later as we continue. Same thing, uh, you, not same thing, I apologize, but building improvements, um, we have nothing uh, for next year. Uh, doesn't mean uh, that the building doesn't need improvements, um, as I'm sure every single person here is aware. Um, it just means that right now, um, we feel like we're in a good place and that there wasn't anything um, that needed to happen immediately. Um, the caulking job that we did on the east wall is still um, doing fine. And actually when we uh, demoed the arena, uh, some of the work that was done on that south wall um, in terms of demoing the arena actually was really helpful. It um, sealed up the part where the yellow jackets were getting in and so um, it's been great. Um, furniture, we have a thousand dollars. This is for us to be able to replace the things that people use, um, whether that's tables for rent, chairs, um, you know, car tables, really anything that happens. We often don't end up using the whole of that money. It's there in case things break and we need to replace them. Um, but it, we, we often will not, um, you'll see years where we don't actually, um, replace all of that. Um, computer software uh, is for a couple different things, and there's, this is this comes out of here and also contractual. Um, and Stan can speak more to it if you'd like, but not necessary certainly. Um, but obviously, our rec, um, Max um, software uh, for people to register, but also a couple other programs that we use have used. Um, and now, now that um, we're going in a different direction, but for um, our magazine for the, the Berkeley Buzz. Um, next, we're getting into summer camp. So, a lot. Some of these numbers have been adjusted, which is great um, to to show uh, camp not happening this year in terms of counselors, um, program supplies, uh, and contractual services. So, those numbers have been updated, which is great. And again, it shows those numbers happening uh in small form but again that will only be really june of next year um our counselors come back at the beginning of june kids to come in the middle of june any questions on 153 or 154. Okay. um so now we're going to get to the pages that again are the expenses for those each individual program uh uh, I'll, I'll kind of run through them. Uh, youth dance hopefully uh, happens in the fall. So those numbers probably will be good um, if that happens. Pillow polo is the same thing because that doesn't run in the summer. Uh, girls team basketball camp will not happen this summer. Um, girls volleyball camp will not happen this summer. Uh, boys team basketball camp will not happen this summer. Women's softball will not happen this summer. Tennis will not happen this summer. Um, community center use, we already talked about. Um, again, in here, part-time employees, you see um, most of Connie's hours. Um, and again, that number will be at some point amended based on when we open the community center back up, but should remain as it is for, for now. Um, any questions before I move on to 163? 163 Dream Cruise, again, most of these will all, and, and, and we can make that decision um, in a, for, I think, a first quarter budget amendment, um, but most of these expenses you, you, you won't see. Um, actually, yeah, I mean, uh, you look at like 915818, none of that, um, 915758, none of that, so um, you'll see. Um, all of these zeroed out. Any questions? Okay. Um, 165 Summerfest Winterfest. Um, again, uh, you know, we'll, we'll leave that in for now based on what we don't know about next year, but obviously all of those have been canceled this year. 166. Okay, so now we're getting into. Um, Can you just clarify that, Teresa? So, winter fast is canceled for this year too. No, I'm sorry, summer fast. Only summer fast. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we have again the 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 statement through Labor Day. Everything else. Well, sorry, I apologize. Thank you for asking me that. Sure. Thank you. 
Okay. Um, so now we get into 614-950-706. Um, sorry. Um, so part-time employees, you see here, again, that's, um, that's outdoors, um, and a lot of that will be halved. Playground supply, that is mulch. Um, program supply, that's programs for all of our miscellaneous programs. Contractual services, um, that's all the classes, and plus, I mean, there's, there's dozens more, but obviously that's listed there in terms of jump around, karate, tai chi, all of those. Um, engineering, um, obviously that's for, there's nothing in there for 2020, 2021. And then we get to page 167, which has all of our uh, land improvements, um, of which uh, this year we have a uh, tot lot um, remaining. Um, there will be a carryover, a large carryover from last year's land improvements, obviously for the work that's at Oxford Merchants, um, but it's from this year that will be carried to next year. Next year, the only thing that we have budgeted is tot lot at $90,000, and that's to replace the large play structure that is at tot lot. Um, we've had a number of improvements that we have had to make um, over the last couple of years, parts of slides, things like that. Um, and each time we have to do that, um, because it's so old, we have to get something that's, you know, mismatching color and to get just a piece of a slide to have it shipped and installed is typically between three and four thousand um, dollars. And so this was something that we wanted to keep in this year. Um, it definitely, that structure needs an overhaul more than any of our other structures at this point. Um, so that's what's there. I don't know if right now you want to talk about that or if you want to have a conversation about um, Oxford Merchants or if you want me to keep going. Well, this is probably a, a good place to have a, a brief conversation about Oxford Merchants and, and the plans <clears throat> moving forward uh, this year. Do you want me to say something? I don't know if you want to. If you want to start, or if not, well, I mean, council's already aware. We know what's going on. Um, sure. I yeah. No. I, I mean, sure. I'm happy to talk. So, um, you know, so so everyone is aware. This is a conversation that we have had, um, and, and I'm looking at sort of Tori Matt ad nauseum, um, over and over and over and over again. Um, and the 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 decision that was made um, was. I, I want to say threefold, but it's actually more like five and sixfold. Um, was uh, do we, you know, obviously the question is, do you move forward this year? Or do we not move forward? Um, one of the biggest um, issues is is that um, the construction would have to be complete by the end of 2021 um, in order to get um, the funding from the state. Um, we, we we would have through 2021. However, really, construction season is obviously for a park. You're going to do it in the spring. We were concerned that construction in 2021 there would be a pretty big backlog um, with it, and we wanted to make sure that we had it done. Um, second reason being that um, our parks right now cannot be used. So the idea to do construction in a time when it's already closed um, appealed to 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 everyone. I think. Um, the fact that the equipment already can't be used and that if we're going to do this construction. And, and then the idea that um, money obviously was budgeted, it's a carryover, it's not a new budget item for this year. Also the idea that um, assuming that by opening of just after Labor Day 2021, uh, the park was completed this year, that it, we would be able to open it and people would be able to use it and it could serve as a great thing in progress for the city and, and, and a bright light um, after this difficult time. So those were um, many of the main reasons. Um, I don't know if Matt or Tori want to add on to that, but, but those were many of the main reasons and I'm happy to um, take questions or speak more specifically. Uh, I, you said everything I would have said. I, I think I cc'd you on the message I sent to council, sort of explaining some of the same reasoning. And I would agree with with the reasons. Um, you know, the, the 
the potential to lose the grant is, is very concerning to me. This is obviously something that we've been working on for a number of years. And I do have concerns that the construction season will be extremely backlogged um, in 2021. And, you know, with the money being budgeted and with the park not really being usable right now, it does seem to be a good time. Now that construction is allowed um, to, to be able to move forward with the project. And I just want to have any, any thoughts, Natalie? Yes, I agree with all of that. Thank you very much for all of the thought and conversations and difficult decisions that you made, but I absolutely support them. A question I think for you, Teresa, Matt, and Council um, is I see on here that the, uh, it looks to me like the, the parking lot for Oxford merchants is looking to be delayed a year. Was that originally? planned to be in 21 22 or was that delayed because of COVID? this is my question it was originally planned to be in 2020 so like this this coming off fiscal year 2021 um so it was delayed yes and i'm just curious of the decision for that the pros and cons of doing that and again for council if that's what we want to do um, I think cost uh, over were some of the biggest, and I, I think concern over cost. I also think concern over cost of what we're already doing at the park. Um, some of our early conversations are that, I mean, obviously, given the time, we're hoping that they actually might be a little lower, but I think some of those costs are going to be a little higher than, than we had originally thought. And so I think cost, Natalie, and then I, I, I think... Um, I think the thought was there's obviously parking there now. Um, the idea is to expand it because we know it will be popular. Another thought is that because we won't probably be opening a lot of these amenities this year, it won't be as needed as when it is crowded um, when it is open. How many um, extra spots would the parking lot reconstruction add compared to what's there now? a good question it's not a lot it's it's at the most like 12 to 13 but probably only like 10. it's street parking on cambridge um and it's heading um west so it's not a lot thank you mm -hmm. additional thoughts and comments on oxford merchants Mershford. ross yeah, thank you, Dan. Um, so, Teresa, you know, I, I just want to make sure because I thought I heard you say state. This is federal uh, money, correct? It's. Um, I apologize. It's federal, but the state it comes through the DNR, and the DNR is the one who oversees all of this happening. They're the ones that I. And so it is federal money um, because, and and that's a good point. So thank you. It's a it, it's a good point because some of the state funded grants have have, have a hold on them right now um so but the federal grants this one does not but it, it but they administer it but we we've received emails that it's there is not a hold on it and originally we actually received a hold up stop and then about eight days later we received a, an email saying because it was a federal grant that um that it was not delayed yeah so that actually goes to kind of the point that i was gonna, i was going to make um you know i think that anybody trying to predict what the federal budget is going to look like as a result of this, I think it's a little bit of a fool's errand. Um, and so even if we did start construction next year and actually completed it within that time frame that's required, I, I have no idea what programs are going to be cut, reduced, eliminated. And so I think that, um, you know, while the money's there, while they're still giving us the green light, uh, I do think that it's probably prudent to go ahead with what was already budgeted as a carryover. And a corollary to that is, as we've seen, you know, whenever there's federal money, it has to pass through a few other places before it gets to us. And, and that stop is typically the state. And depending on what happens with the state economy as well as the federal economy, I'm just not 100% sure. So while we have it and we have the confirmation that it's good, I would like to make sure we can act on it. Okay. Does anyone have any questions about the tat lot equipment improvement? Okay. I'm just, uh, I'm just glad to say that I'm I'm uh, I'm, I'm glad that it's it's going to be proceeding. I think it's uh, it's important. Uh, the, the 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 Frankenstein you know um, cobbling uh, is a is a testament to the creativity and the 
and the uh, tenacity of the group to, to keep that thing uh, going. Uh, but I think that's I think that's an, an appropriate um, action to take. Okay, thank you. Um, so the next year's equipment in this year's budget, we have a sand pro. Um, the name is a little bit different. It's similar to what we had originally budgeted, but uh, it's a new type of equipment that's used for setting up ball fields. Um, I've actually seen the demos. Um, I know that um, Sean was at our demo day, um, and our maintenance staff is very, very, very eager and excited about this piece of equipment. It makes ball field setup um, cleaner, easier, nicer. Right now, what we do a lot of times is like have to do attachments on attachments in order to get the dragging effect and that sort of thing. With the Sand Pro, you don't have to do that. It gives it also a very um, professional look to, to the field. Um, Certainly, I know difficult, difficult budget year, um, but I'm hopeful. Uh, obviously, this would be used for for years to come. Teresa, in my copy, it uh, unless I'm reading it wrong, it looks like the Sand Pro is delayed to twenty one twenty two. Am I missing something? Yeah, it wasn't supposed to be. Uh, I, think, no, I, think it's, I think it's up, like it's up, like it's... Yeah, yeah. the notes the notes uh, don't track straight across. Yeah. If, you look, if you look at the amounts versus where the note is, it's the numbers above where the uh, note description is. So the Sand Pro is actually in the 2021 budget. Okay. Yeah, 21-22 is replacing the department vehicle. Right. Yeah, I, I understand now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Got it. Teresa, is this something that can be easily moved from ball field to ball field? Uh, I'm not sure. I've never seen one, so I don't know what it looks like. Yeah, it's 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 pretty small. So, it, like like anything, it would be able to like at one, two, and three. It would just drive right to those fields. But any other time, it can just go into like our trailers, or it, it it's a pretty small um, little thing that you could in and ride. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, so now we're gonna flip to 173. Um, we'll get into senior services. Um, obviously not one of our hugest accounts. Um, again, uh, so as far as our smart um, revenue and funds go, we have not been told anything is changing. Uh, however, I've been getting smart emails and surveys about our services and 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 all, and all that sort of thing for several weeks so um no promises i i, I so the, there everything in the budget is as known now but um I, i've definitely been getting a lot of um questions um as are all, all communities that use smart so i just want to um put that note in there uh, senior programs, the 15000 that we have budgeted, um, I think we'll probably, uh, for revenues, we're going to see a slight dip, um, again, based on when we're able to, because our senior programs run year-round, and we're obviously not running, you know, trips and, and that sort of thing right now, obviously, are also I'm concerned that, you know, when we start to, we may see lower numbers. Um, Again, all of the smart services you see, municipal, smart credits, independence for life, um, those those fee, those revenues, um, some of those revenues will go down in terms of bus fares. Um, right now, we are not running our smart services. Um, we stopped running them fairly early. Other cities followed. Our plan as of right now um, is once um, shelter in place is lifted, we would like to run a limited service, um, but we will not do so until um, we feel that our buses are safe, that we have the correct PPE. Um, we're looking into some sort of like three quarter plus shielding uh, for our drivers, um, right, correct signage and, and, and that sort of thing for anyone getting on the bus. And again, um, probably through Labor Day, we'll be running pretty limited doctors, um, grocery, um, those sorts of things that we need that we know that our seniors need. Um, but we want to be careful and also protect um, both the seniors and, and our employees and anyone who comes in contact with our buses. Um, on 175, you will see um, our drivers are broken out into two different accounts, um, 615-110-707 and also 615-113-707. Um, 
obviously our drivers are not currently driving. Um, the contractual services, this is where we see um, our expenses for the trips that we take them on. Obviously, the expense right now is 11. Um, we were saying that we would bring in 15. Our revenues fall, our expenses will fall as well. It means that we're running fewer programs. In our senior, um, you know, Derek mentioned maintenance and that sort of thing. We, in our accounts for this, you'll see vehicle maintenance, you see vehicle supplies, you even see a small amount where our mechanic, who, by the way, just does an absolute fantastic job. He's, he's incredible. Um, but you'll see where he has a footnote in 615-113-707 for some of the work that he does. Um, and we account for all of that when we fill out our SMART reports as well. Any questions, 176, 177? Any questions, senior funds? It's pretty straightforward. Um, the only other thing I want to note then is an account that I used to have to run through quite a bit um, is on page 215, um, and that is our arena. You know, we don't have it anymore, um, but there's still there's still some some fees in there, um, and um, you'll just see the activity that we've had this year, and um, that next year um, we will not. So. Um, could change if there has to be any electrical work. Um, may have to see an amendment for that because um, we're still not sure if everything is um, good with the electrical that we had um, for it to work in our, our for our tennis courts and concession. We're speaking with our electrician. He obviously hasn't been working for the last couple months because he was supposed to take care of that. So once we know that, we can make sure that that cost is there. But overall, you won't see any other cost in that account. And that's Parks and Rec. Well, thank you, Teresa. Obviously, <clears throat> going through your budget, it is a, a very safety heavy budget, but it's also a little bit depressing uh, because we can't do a lot of the programs and signature events that, that we would normally do every year. But that certainly is in the interest of the safety of all of our residents and, and those that come into our city. Uh, but it, it's, it's still, you know, not knowing that those events won't happen in the summer camps and summer fest is, is tough to take. Um, but they will return. We know they will return, and hopefully uh, next year we'll be able to have uh, more exciting and fun-filled budgets um, as we go through Parks and Rec, as we can bring back hopefully most of those events and, and programs, and hopefully after Labor Day uh, we are able to do that as well. And I, I want to commend you and your staff for the significant on-the-fly changes that you've had to make, or even though we haven't made them all on paper, knowing that they're coming, and it's just a reality of, of what we're dealing with. It's it's uncertain times, and we have to make sure you know, that safety is number one. And at least being able to move forward with the Oxford Merchants Project uh, hopefully will provide a, a little bit of, of hope and um, a little light at the end of the tunnel for, for next year when we're able to open that up. So thank you. Any other final uh, comments or questions for Teresa? I just want to say I. Um, thoroughly enjoyed being the liaison to um, the Parks and Rec Advisory Board and just thank you again for your attention to detail and I mean this isn't like really pretty or fun but to Dan's point it is very safety heavy and that's super important so thank you for that thank you for hanging in there even when things are a bit grim um, and I am encouraged by um, moving forward with Oxford Merchants. Um, I think that for all the reasons that have already been stated, it, it's a good thing to do. So thank you again, Teresa. Appreciate all your work. All right, seeing no additional comments. Again, thank you, Teresa. And we will move on to finance debt funds. Uh, this will be really quick because we covered this yesterday. Um, the only debt we have under the debt tab on page 196 and 197 is the 11 mile road bonds. And those get paid off in 2021, uh, 300,000 in principal and 6,000 in interest and then a paying agent fee. And that will be it for that debt. And other than the uh, Enterprise Fund, the George W. Kuhn drainage debt, uh, Berkeley will be debt free. That's it. And that is a great place to be. Yeah. 
Uh, any questions on, on 11 mile? Again, it was it was touched on. We know that it's coming off. It's it's something that is um, pretty exciting. And to be honest, not having debt is even more important uh, for me right now. Looking forward, uh, because any projects that we want to do in the future that relate to our bond rating um, that take into account debt and, and general fund. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen with the economy. Um, and being in a strong position and not having debt could be very important for us to maintain that bond rating and then moving forward for projects that we look to do in the future. Um, so being able to, to retire that 11 mile debt this year um, is a pretty incredible feat for, for our community and not having other debt currently on the rolls. And that brings us to the end of our budget work sessions. Um, First, I want to again thank Mark and Lori, the, the entire staff, um, all of the directors, department heads, staff on, on a budget that is unlike any that we've seen in a long time. And as I started with at the beginning of our session yesterday, it's even very different than it was in 2008 and 2009. We are dealing with something that we don't know when it will be over. We don't know when things will recover, um, but we know that it is going to have significant impact on not only our revenue in our budgets, but also what happens at the federal and state level and all of the, the flow throughs uh, that are going to impact us as well. And, and one of the other concerns is you know, the capital projects that we are pushing off this year. Eventually, those are going to have to get done. And I'm, I'm hoping that when the federal, uh, the federal government and the state government recover, that they realize the impact that municipalities are going to feel on capital projects, but especially on infrastructure in communities uh, as old as ours and, and our neighbors. And I hope that they will be able to respond and, and be there to support us. But at the same time, uh, any of us that have been in this game long enough realize that unfortunately that isn't always the case. And we have to be able to, to make decisions and, and we have to be able to take care of ourselves. And even with this budget, we are able to preserve a very strong fund balance, giving us the flexibility uh, that we will need in the future as we um, understand a little bit more of what the impact of these uncertain times are going to have on us moving forward. And I want to thank Council for all the time that it takes to go through these budget books, all the conversations that we've had with department heads before this, in order to make sure that we have a discussion over the last couple of days that are relevant and impactful as, again, and we, we do the most important work which is mining the resources um, of the city. And this year, especially watching out for the safety of our residents and everybody that, that comes into the city of Berkeley. So thank you all for, for your time and your dedication. Um, before I close, are there any other additional comments that uh, anybody would like to make? Of course, hey. I have one more comment. Um, I just want to recognize the fantastic teams that we have in the city, every department across the board. Um, I think that um, City Hall, it's sort of a shining moment. You guys have, it's like good all the way around. And I feel that cohesiveness and the sense of team and working together. And so when I look at City Hall and all of the other departments, I'm just so grateful that we have the people in place that we do because it shows, it shows not only in the work that was done on the budget, but what you bring um, to the table, whether you're at home or actually in your space every day that that shows through. So I'm just thankful for all of you. Thank you, Rita. Thank you. Okay. And with that, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Support. Motion made by Mayor Pro Tem Dean with support from Council Member Baker. Uh, as we did yesterday, we'll try to make this a little easier on you, Victoria. All in favor, turn on your microphones first and signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, our budget work session Wednesday, May 13th is adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. Good work, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.